Welcome, welcome, welcome to Controversial and Deep Biblical Breakdown Series sponsored by the Scoring Black Man Podcast. I'm your host, Sadat Hilltop, Quail Tribe Israel. I got a wonderful, wonderful show for you today. Once again, man, I don't know how many shows he done done, but he ain't done one in a while, but it is Brother Ka- Malachi Maccabee. Once again, that's that brother Malachi Maccabee, you know what I'm saying? Peace and abundant blessings, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we got his show today, and it's going to be a great presentation. The name of the title is The Similarities and the Differences Between the Holy Bible and the Awaspi Bible. Once again, the, the name of the show is The Similarities and the Differences Between the Holy Bible and the Awaspi Bible. And uh, as you know, uh, the Waspy uh, crew has been on the scene for probably a little bit over. I've been knowing them for a little bit over a year, maybe a year and a half now. Uh, they've been causing controversy. They they got the science. They got the, you know, the uh, everything, you know what I'm saying? They got the science part down, man. They got, you know, they come with the scriptures and they scriptures, you know what I'm saying? So it's uh, I see a lot of similarities and I see a lot of differences as well. Uh, and I reached out to the brother Malachi Maccabee. I thought he would probably be the most uh, equipped to deal with this uh, since he's uh, been deep in the Bible. And now he's deep in a waspy so he can kind of break a fresh um, approach upon it and just tell us the similarities and, and the differences between the Holy Bible and the waspy Bible. Brother Malachi Maccabee, are you there, my brother? Hey, hey, abundant favor and blessings, man, in the name of the ever-present creator, brother, uh, the all and all that always was, is, and never shall be, the mighty and great I am, the mighty and great spirit. Hey, shout out to my brother Hilltop for reaching out to me. You know, we got time zone differences and all that, but hey, you know, when it's time to link up and talk about what's real and what's solid and what you can objectively, you know, prove and what resonates with your spirit, hey, tap in with the credit gang, man, CGG in the building, FGK, uh, go to Credit Gang TV, like, subscribe, share. Uh, Honor Humility STL, like, subscribe, share. See La Shalom TV, Cosmon Cow TV. Uh, man, the gang out here, man. Like, we out here. All you gotta do is look, we ain't hard to find. We are really, really in them streets when you come to this. You feel me? So, uh, right on for having me, brother. And yeah, you already know what I come to do. I come to cook, man. I don't come to play around with nobody about nothing. Let's get it. Okay, before you get into the presentation, I want you to give the people that may not know you a quick and brief, a quick and brief background on your walk. So you know what books you started off with, you know, so your whole trans uh, transition into whatever you're in right now. Okay. I think you use both. All right. You know, no so I well, look, I've, I've been a uh, an aware Israelite for the past 21 years. So that, that's half my life. I'm double that now. Um, I come out of an Israelite zone to where we weren't just bound to the Bible. 1611 King James, we read books like the Book of Joshua, Jubilees, Enoch, Josephus, uh, all of it, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, every Anything that we can get out of the lost books of the Bible, you know, uh, the infancy gospels, the gospels of Thomas, the Nag of my, like we used to read a whole bunch of you know what I mean? Different text and all that. You feel me? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started off with the, the, the Bible and everything that, that vouches for it. You feel me? And then around 2021, I got into the Nazarene scene literature. I seen a couple brothers out there getting it on. And then one of my little brothers it came and was like the last witness and was like, bro, you got to get this. So I started reading the Nazarene scene literature. And that's a whole different side of Israel. You feel me? Them brothers don't believe in warfare, no sacrifice, no flesh eating, uh, no blood on the altar. No. Uh, you know what I mean? It's more of a balanced, peaceful type living type. You know what I mean? Communal living, uh, all things in common type. You feel me? So uh, around 2021, I got into that. Read through the Nazarene Gospels, the Nazarene Acts, the Clementine homilies, told through the church fathers and all them. I got over 110 Nazarene editions, over 400 hours worth of teaching on the topic. You know what I mean? So that was the beginning of 2021. By the time I got around October, November 21, a good brother of mine, bro, Yazo. Shout out to Yazo, man. 
You know, man, TX in the building, stand up. Y'all always reached out to me because he had been stopped chewing on animals. And he was like, uh, he asked me about a waspy. And I, once I heard about it, I had been watching uh, our brother, salute my brother, C-Lot Shalom, been watching c -Lot since about 2013. I, I, and, I, and I witnessed, I watched him debate the Israelite elder in 2015. And uh, he ragged out, dude. It wasn't even close. You know what I mean? And then... And even then, in my mind, I was like, I had to be real with myself. Like, man, damn, he destroyed, dude. You feel me? But being involved and on the front line of something, sometimes you can't tell the forest from the trees. You feel me? So I had been heard about it. I actually went and got it. I actually went and bought it at one time. I had it over my little bro. Shout out to Yaki Hickman. You know what I mean? Had had one right there. And we still got it, matter of fact, sitting over his crib. Uh, so Yazo reached out to me. Uh, linked me with C-Lot through the Facebook and all that, you know what I mean? Ordered a wasp, he got to reading through it, and I seen all types of similarities uh, dealing with the Nazarene and the scene walk. You feel me? Everything from uh, no flesh, eating, no blood on the altar, the sacrificing, the warfare, everything, you know what I mean? Like, it was like, oh, okay, and then I went right to the story. Like, when I first got a wasp, I went right to the story, y'all sure. Anybody know me? No Messianic Israelite. Like, that's just what it is, you know what I mean? So I went right to the story of Yahshua, and it lined right up with the gospel of the Nazarenes and what he was teaching in earth. I say, oh, we, you feel me? Now, the same Nazarene literature go back to the first and second centuries. OISP came out in 1881. So how is this even matching like that? You feel me? So uh, I started reading more and more and dove into it, resonating with my spirit. I say, this deal hitting like steel. You know what I mean? Linked up with a few real ones. Uh, started the battle with the holy books. A lot of brothers start ducking. Um, brothers start, but it was a lot of brothers that was like, shit, let's bang. You know what I mean? Sila Shalom, Cosmo and Carol, salute. My brother Daryl Cosmo, salute. You know, we the four horsemen. And so from 2021 to now, she's about three years, going on three years. You know what I mean? I've been banging. I've been rocking with the game, man. And uh, we are not atheists. You feel me? Uh, uh, none of that. You know, we believe in the ever present creator. You feel me? So that's my walk in a nutshell. So and so when it comes to the Israelite doctrine and and uh I I never stop professing to be an Israelite. That's what I am. You feel me? I can't stop being what I am. You know? But when it comes down to behavior and the character of the gods and the lords and the all that extra stuff, bro. We gotta, you know, we gotta start back over and, and look at this objectively and be real with ourselves. Like, hey, look, it, hey, it's some blood in the war. You feel me? So when it comes to Israel, bro, I've been that half my life, 21 years. You know what I mean? So it really ain't too much uh, or no type of doctrine anybody can come with that I ain't heard. You know what I mean? So if anybody is equipped to talk about Bible and a waspy, it's me. It's me. And that's why I that's why I chose you, brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's all wow. good. I, I thank you, I chose, you know, I thank you for reaching out like, to me, bro, because I was like, you know what, bro? When you hit me, I was feeling good, too. I ain't going to lie, bro. I was feeling good. Look over, you hit me. I say, bro, that'll be perfect. That'll yeah. be perfect. You know what I mean? So, so good, that give the people a chance to see, you know, on, on both sides and in the middle, you know, uh, the similarities and the differences. And, and hear from a person that has been well studied and you know, like you say, the you know saying the 66, the 80s. I mean mm -hmm. the 66 books, the 80 books, the the plus books, you know what I'm saying? Then, then, then the Nazarene text, and now the Wasp, you know what I'm saying? So now you, you know, cause you you don't went 360 degrees, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you know, cause you don't study a whole circle of things, you know what I'm saying? So you well equipped to talk about the situation, man. What what I further do, brother? Yeah, that's the thing. One thing about it before we start, uh, it, it's liberty and freedom over this way. So we, we're not forcing nobody to read nothing we're talking about. We just letting everybody know, look, we play ball. You know what I mean? It's a higher light outside, and uh, we, ain't the, we, we, we ain't the scary type. So whoever want to debate it or have a conversation about it, look, we play ball. You know what I mean? And I'm specifically talking to you men. I, I don't even want to debate no woman about none of this. You know what I mean? Because I ain't trying to talk to another man's woman greasy like she on the battlefield and then I got a problem with the next brother. You feel me? But for any men that 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 want a problem or want to debate or feeling froggy, look, your fingers ain't broke. 
we can set some up right on her or any type of neutral platform we can get it done you know what yeah, I mean? sit up right on here man come on right on here man we love that type of uh you know what i'm saying just a nice friendly you know what i'm saying yeah. You yeah. read that description. Yeah. Right we ain't not forcing there. anybody to do nothing. You know what I mean? Look, you got freedom to read whatever, and if it resonates with you, keep it. You can you can add that to your journey. If it's something that that just jars your spirit, you ain't got to deal with. It. Everyone has that freedom. You know what I mean? So I I read through it all. I read through the Bible. I read through the Quran. I read through a waspy. I read all type of different things. You know what I mean? It just comes down to you got to reach that spot within your own spirit to be like, ah, yeah, I feel comfortable uh, rocking with that. Oh, you know what? That don't even sound right. You know what I mean? Nah, I'm good. You, Everyone has that right. You know what I mean? And that, that don't mean your chestnuts going to roast forever because you're asking questions and you're critically examining what it is. Because think about it. Think about it, y'all. We talking about ain't nothing higher to talk about than who everybody call God. This is who you supposed to be going to see when you die. So contrary to popular belief, we don't play. Look, look, we y'all part of a game. We don't play. We not playing with the conscious community. You feel me? Like we out here putting this forth, this scholarly work, bro, and being being saying or, or saying that or that's coming from a brother that's been around. You feel me, bro? It's a higher light outside. That's it. You feel me? And either either it resonate with you or it don't. And if it don't, you got every right to keep it pushing. It's all good. You feel me? Easy work. Let's work though, bro. Whenever you're ready. Man. Hey, before we start the presentation, man, y'all do a favor. Hit that like button right now. Hit that subscribe button right now, man. You know what I'm saying? Do that right now. Like See? button, dislike button, subscribe button. Hit a button. Man. Hit a button. Man, boy, I further ado. Uh, on both channels, brother uh, Malachi Maccabee is uh, honor and STL humility. You know what I'm saying? Did I say it right? I mean, humility, STL. Yeah, honor, honor and humility, Let me, let me, let me count these short leggings down real quick, and I'm ready to rock. Hold on. Yeah, man. Y'all go over there and hit that subscribe button. If you like traveling, go to Hilltop Traveling Everywhere. You're going to get some food reviews, hotel reviews, excursion reviews, and just me acting a fool a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But it's all in good spirits. Man, shout out to the chat out there, man. I see you, uh, brother uh, Shalom Shalom, uh, brother uh, Daryl Cosman, Cosman Kale, Dominique, uh, I think Shaka Light, uh, Shaka Light, Cosman, man, everybody, man. Aki out there, man. All of y'all, the sisters. Let me get some of these sisters. Hold on, man. Uh, sister, uh, Sister uh, Brown Curry up in here. So, Jamil. Uh, everybody. Yeah. yeah Jamil, 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 you got to credit that. You know what I mean? Yeah, David Long, Dominique. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, man. Shout out to everybody, man. All right, brother. Without further ado, brother Malachi McAbee will present the day's show, and it's called The Similarities and the Differences Between the Holy Bible and the Awaspi. Once again, The Similarities and the differences between the Holy Bible and the Owaspi Bible. Without further ado, Brother Malachi Maccabee, the floor is yours, my brother. Let's go ahead and work. I already shared my screen, big dog. There we go right there. Feel me? All praises to the ever-present creator, the all in all, the always was, is, and ever shall be, the mighty and great spirit, the mighty and great I am. I'm your brother Malachi Maccabee. Megaton light bomb of the CGG created gang gang in the building FGK, you know what I mean? And the no fly zone NFZ, baby. All the BS getting checked at the door. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this is a put something together for y'all, slow cooked it. You know, we just gonna roll with it, man. We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna go ahead and get it done. I need to send this, this right here, this link real quick. Let's go ahead and get it done, man. You feel me? I know a lot of people did like when they hear about a wasp, then they be acting like they gonna start reading it and their head start spinning or some crazy madness. Nah, this ain't the poker guys. We ain't on nothing evil. And I and I challenge anybody listening, stop me when you hear something evil or wicked. Not what you disagree with, but evil or wicked. All right, let's go ahead and cook. Matter of fact, give me a vortex up in the chat if y'all can hear me good, man. I need to make sure our levels are straight. I need to make sure we, we, you know what I mean? Everything is hitting like steel. 
You know what I mean? We ain't coming to play. Y'all spin that vortex up in that chat if I could be heard thoroughly. Let's go ahead and make our move, man. Let's go ahead and make our move, gang gang in the building. All right, I see Vortex is spinning. We good. All right, let's cook. Let's go ahead and cook. Malachi Maccabee of Creative Gang TV presents similarities and differences between the old Bible and a wasp. All praises to the ever present creator of all creation, that always was, is, and never shall be. The mighty and great spirit, the all in all. In this presentation, in this presentation, I will be going over several similarities and differences between the Holy Bible and O I speak. The purpose of this is to make the masses aware of a higher light than what the mainstream has offered for millenniums. You may hear something that resonates with your spirit or something that rattles your spirit. Either way, I challenge you all to listen closely. And time stamp when I said anything evil or demonic. May the creator enrich you with love, light, and balance. Similarity number one, the story of Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice. Genesis 22, 1 through 3, 6 through 12, KJV, Bible. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto Abraham. And he said, behold, here am I, here I am. And he said, take now thy son thine only son Isaac, whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him, offer him for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Notice Abraham understands from the moment biblical God tempted him that he was commanded to offer up his promised son as a burnt offering. In other words, he wasn't tricked into it. Verse three, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass <laughs> And took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave or chopped the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and he took the fire or a torch in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, her am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire, behold the torch and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Oh, man. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. and They came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Oh, wait, look at this. You see that? Abraham was going to cut down his son to prove his devotion to biblical God. This sounds familiar because we have the testimony of modern men who are devoted to the same deity, boldly proclaiming they wouldn't hesitate to execute their child to prove their loyalty. And if y'all been following us, you already know we got receipts. We got well over five. We got five reputable Israelite men claiming boldly they would kill their child if God told them to. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. What does a wasp reveal about Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac? Pay attention. Class is in session. Oh, I speak. Headshot. Chapter 9, first book of God. Now, after Abraham and his people had returned to Jireh, his camp, and it was night, God said to Abraham, be steadfast. Well, this is true God talking to Abraham. Be steadfast and show your people so that they may understand my word. And while they were still praying before the altar, God, true God, withdrew from Abraham and allowed the evil angels who had followed them from Sodom and Gomorrah to draw near the altar. And one of the angels clothed himself in a great light and adorned with sparkling gems and a crown. He appeared so all the multitude of people could look upon him. Abraham said, who are you? And the spirit said, I am your God, ruler of heaven and earth. Abraham said, I am your servant. What may I do for you? And the spirit said, you should take your only son, Isaac, and your hosts whom were with you at Sodom and Gomorrah and go with me where I will lead you. For well, I have a great work for you. Abraham said, I will do whatever you put upon me to do. 
So in the morning, Abraham and his son Isaac and the host who had been with Abraham told to Sodom and Gomorrah assembled together. And Abraham spoke saying, word to old God. The spirit answered saying, take sticks and a firebrand. There go that torch. And come to the summit of the hill over there. For you shall restore the rights of burnt offerings. Hmm. Abraham told the people what God had said. So they began, and Isaac carried the bundle of willows, such as basket makers use, saying, this will light the Lord's pieces. But what will you burn for an offering, O Father? And Abraham said, God will provide. And when they ascended to the place, Abraham gathered logs and heaped them up, and Isaac placed the willows. Then the spirit spoke, saying, what shall a man, and I remind you, this, ain't, this is not true God. This is a false God, appearing to be Abraham's God. Pump fake it. Look at this. Then the spirit spoke saying, what shall a man love above all things in the world? And Abraham said, God. And the spirit said, for which reason you shall offer your only son Isaac as a burnt offering. And there shall be testimony before your people that you will obey God, even to the sacrifice of your own flesh and kin. Now look what Abraham said behind this. Abraham said, show me that you are God. Show me that you are God. Show me that you are God so that I may not err, for I have been commanded not to kill. Abraham letting the false God know, if you really my God, you told me not to kill nothing. You see, soon as the inspiration came to kill his son, Abraham said, no, nah, you got to prove that, partner. You got to prove that. And that's how all y'all got to be in spirit. You don't let something just skip across your plate like that. Tempt you to do something evil and you don't check it at the door. Abraham checked it when he came. So that I may, what did he say? Show me that you are God so that I may not error. For I have been commanded not to kill. And the spirit departed away from Abraham. True about that. And the spirit departed away from Abraham, perceiving that he knew the higher law. Huh? What's the higher law? The higher law of not spilling blood, not killing. You see, look at this. And Isaac was grieved at heart for he desired to witness what a sacrifice. Well, Isaac don't even know that he was about to get chopped up and burnt and roasted alive. He don't even know it. Hmm? Look at this. And Isaac was grieved at heart for he desired to witness what a sacrifice was. And the people seeing a ram near at hand went and caught it and slaughtered it and sprinkled the blood on the sacrifice and they lit the fire roasted the flesh then took it and gave it to the poor and abraham called the place jehovah jireh and they returned to the camp and abraham being moved by god spoke before the people look what abraham say after this experience because he just ran into a false god and got tempted to kill his son and do something evil like everyone gets tempted to do to do something evil but he checked the spirit at the door. Now look what he tell the people. Abraham said, this testimony I declare to you regarding which your own brethren are witnesses, that even the chosen of God can be deceived by who? Evil angels. Now here we make our boast. We the Israelites. We the chosen of God, right? Abraham said, even the chosen of God can be deceived by evil angels. Right? For, they can take, they, for they can take any name and form. Yahweh, Yahweh, Ahiah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, what is it, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, Yahusha, whatever you're talking about. See, you need to know that evil angels can take on the names of any, uh, any name in any form, for they can take any name and form and having no fear of God before them, declare falsehood for truth and darkness for light. And also, as you have seen, the evilest of cities, even as well as the purest, may be the abiding places of angels. For which reason you should not seek signs and miracles. Look at that. For these may be from evil spirits. Yeah, evil spirits do signs and miracles too. Mm. Even though they show their bodies or converse learnedly, it is not in the power of man to know by words and signs or by oaths or promises what is truth. Look at that. But the Father has created one thing besides, which is his own life, for which reason be believing toward men and angels. And when they teach you according to the creator, look at this, y'all, which is life to all and happiness to all, 
without sacrifice to any. They are holy. What is Owas be showing you? It's showing you how to differentiate between righteous angels or righteous spirits and evil spirits when they come whispering. This is how you know when they teach you according to the creator, which is life to all and happiness to all, everybody, without the shedding of blood of any. And those are righteous spirits. They are holy. If man or angel says, visit the sick and administer to the distress, follow his advice. For it is of the Father. But if man or angel says, do this, and you shall have profit or glory or applause, do not obey him. For he advises for yourself and not for the brotherhood of man. He is not of God. You see that? So if it's all about you and being self-centered, you know what I mean, and something selfish, that is not a righteous spirit. That's not the spirit of the creator. That's a false God. Look at this. For spirits will come disguised as your fathers and mothers. Look at that. Who are dead for spirits will come disguised as your fathers and mothers who are dead professing love and profit to you do not believe them except when they teach you to sacrifice self for the good of us hear that look at this the wicked in heart having profited in herds and in gold and silver say behold god has blessed me when i say to you they are cursed and not of god has he gathered you together here because you were rich, Israel? You were slaves. Huh? Ain't that the narrative? Huh? You were slaves and in poverty, sick and in bondage. And he came and delivered you. Be like him and he will abide with you. If a man comes to you saying, behold, this is my coat, give it to me. You shall say, prove yourself as to who you are. Right, I'm just not going to give you the coat. You got you to prove it. But if a man comes to you saying your herd is going astray, you should not say to him, prove yourself as to who you are, but go and see after your herd. If a spirit says, behold, I am your father, say to him, it is well. What do you want? See, you now you're learning how to commune in spirit because all type of spirits will come visit you. Uh, you got to be a straight shooter. Huh? All right, that's good. You want pops, what do you want? And when he answers, you consider if his words are of God which are for the glory of the creator. And if his words are not of God, you should challenge him to prove himself. Mm. As God is captain of heaven and earth to all righteous souls, so is there a Satan who is captain over evil spirits. And to the extent that the king's people do not have faith in the father, so do their souls fall prey to Satan and his souls. Yeah, come on home to Jaja. -ja. Yet neither shall man flatter himself by saying, behold, I have joined the Israelites. I have joined the faithless. My soul shall escape hell, for in that day and hour, God may be putting him to the test to see if his heart is for good works and holiness. But because you profess God, listen up, but because you profess God, you are doubly bound to practice godliness in your behavior toward men and angels. See, look at that. Mm. You got the creator on your mouth. You got true God on your mouth. You're doubly bound to practice good works huh? amongst men and spirits. Different number one. Notice in Owaspi, it is not Abraham's God that tempts him to offer up Isaac. It is a false God. Pump faking like he's the real deal. Also notice that as soon as Abraham realized the deity wanted the blood of his son, he quickly told the God to prove himself. Hmm. The false God perceived Abraham knew the higher law of not shedding blood and immediately departed. All of us can practically use that. All of us can use that. Chapter 8, first book of God, OSP, headshot. Look at this. Out of the host of Persia, who were of the people of who? Shem, who existed since the days of the flood, came Abram, a man chosen by God in the Ark of Speedle for the deliverance of the Israelites or the faithless of Arabania. Arabania is African, y'all. God said, because they have not raised up one out of the sons of Ham, your name shall become Abraham, and it shall be testimony in thousands of years of my records in the libraries of heaven. And it came to pass that forgers and deceivers, not having the fear of the creator before them, falsely gave the interpretation of the meaning of the words Abraham, not knowing in thousands of years that in so small a matter, he would display the truth and glory of his revealed word. God laid, led Abram away from Hesai, his native place, where he was a maker of baskets and took him to the ancient land of Ham, which had been destroyed by drugs before the flood 
as the name signifies, after which God surnamed him Abraham and made him chief priest, chief rabbi over the faithless of Africa, Urbania. Abram was of pure blood. Trip off this. Abram was of pure blood and an Ahuan. And the light of Suez had been with his forefathers and foremothers since the flood. He was large and red like new copper and had black hair and long beard. First to look upon. First to look upon. But his soul was gentle as a woman's. Abraham could see without eyes and hear without ears. Highly tapped into the spirit realm, knowing things by the light of God which dwelt in him, for which reason God chose Abram to gather together the faithless in Africa, Urbania, and the adjacent countries, even as he appointed Pope and Japheth. We got Abraham's physical description in Owaspi. Huh? What did it say? It said he was large and red like new copper and had black hair, long beard, and first to look upon. Look at that brother right there. That one of them brothers, boy, you look over and he glaring at you, you hurry up and turn your head. Salute the not the dread hot money. Difference number two, while the Holy Bible and Owaspi both speak of Abraham, Owaspi gives the physical appearance of Abraham. No guesswork over here. What's the color of new copper? I'll see that. See that? Ain't no guesswork. Similarly, similarity number two, the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 2, 1 through 10, KJV. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took the wife, a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. The child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Let's see what Owaspi says about the birth of Moses. Chapter 14, Archibald, Owaspi, headshot. Under the Egyptian laws, to worship the great spirit, the creator was accounted a sufficient crime of idolatry. Mm. Meaning the Israelites were not even admitted to the courts to be tried for an offense, but fell under the jurisdiction of the master whom they labored, and his judgments were beyond appeal. Mm. Now, at the time of the birth of Moshe, there were 13 million inhabitants in Egypt, and of these, 4 million were faithless Israelites. And for y'all, just to let y'all know, that's not me putting Israelites in parentheses, as in Owasp. All right, that's not me putting that in parentheses. That's an Owaspi standard edition. All right, four million were faithless or Israelites, more or less. For among the Israelites, not all were of full faith, but many to shirk the rigors of the sun laws professed to be worshipers of God, Osiris, mm, the false. And they would also enlist as soldiers and otherwise connive in the ways of men for sake of favors. For which reason the sun king Pharaoh feared the time might come when the Israelites would revolt against the sun laws or become soldiers and confederate with foreign kingdoms for the overthrow of the Egyptian dynasty. For more than 300 years, the god Baal and the goddess Ashtaroth had driven the foreign kingdoms to war. Hmm. And as a consequence of these wars, the faithists had fled into Egypt or the Israelites had fled into Egypt. These wars are inspired by false gods, all right? not the creator. And even accepted servitude and even accepted servitude rather than be slain elsewhere. Look at that. Jehovah had said, behold, my enemies in killing one another, frighten off my chosen. Now I will lead them into Egypt together and give them a great leader who shall restore my doctrines to them. And afterward, I will deliver them into the lands of their own. And look, this is an excellent story to be going over because the Israelites are in the middle of Passover. Passover is starting for some Israelite camps right now. 
So this is beautiful that we're going over the story of Moses. Now, watch what you're going to learn about that Passover lamb. Chapter 15, Archibald, oh, I speak headshot. The king's palace and pyramids were surrounded by a wall of stone. The 12 gates made of wood and iron. The wall was sufficiently wide for 12 men to walk abreast on it. And the height of the wall was equivalent to 12 squares. On the summit of the wall were 12 houses for the accommodation of the soldiers who patrolled the walls. And in each and every gateway were houses for the keepers of the gates. So that no man, woman, or child could come into the palace or palace grounds without permission. And it came to pass that when Leo Tanas, the king's daughter, walked near the river, accompanied by her maid, she saw a child in a basket among the bulrushes. Leo Tanas commanded her maids to fetch it to her. And when she looked upon it and saw it, it was an Israelitish child. She said, the gods have sent him to me and he shall be my child. And they carried the child into the palace. And Leo Tanas said to the king, behold, a wonder of wonders. I have found the Israelitish child in a basket in the rushes. Or how it scaled the walls. Mm. The king said, keep the child and it shall be both a brother and a son to you. Nevertheless, my God shall find the way my grounds are entered. Or blood will be upon them. So they're like, how did they, how did this basket even get onto the palace complex? There is no way in. Right? You can't come onto the palace complex until unless you've been let in. Dig so Pharaoh, like uh, they better find out how this basket got up in her, or it's gonna be blood. Look at this. Now, after some days, and when the search had been completed and no way discovered as to the manner of the child's ingress. The king issued a decree commanding a thousand Israelitish male children to be put to death. Moses among the rest, unless the mother of the child, Moses, came and confessed as to the manner of ingress. The king allotted three days in which time the matter could should culminate. But nevertheless, the mother did not come and confess. And the king called his daughter and said to her, what shall be done? Leo did not say the king's word must not be broken. Nevertheless, you gave the child to me saying, keep it. And there shall be a brother and a son to you. And immediately I sent my maids and procured an Israelitish woman as nurse for the child. And I set my heart upon the child, nor can I part with it and live. Last night I consulted the oracle concerning the matter, for I saw that your mandate must be fulfilled. The king said, and what did the oracle say? Leo Tanah said, proclaim word abroad that the nurse of the child is its mother. Hmm. Now I beseech you, O king, let it be heralded abroad that all is confessed. The king, seeing the child, relented, and word was proclaimed as Leo Tanas had desired, and moreover, the matter was entered in the rec recorder's house that the mother of the child had made the basket and placed it where it was found. Though no reason was assigned for the action, such then was the Egyptian explanation that Moses' mother put him in that basket. Look at this. And that's the Egyptian explanation. Huh? Now, the truth of the matter was, this is how Moses got onto the palace complex, the grounds. Now, the truth of the matter was the angels of the creator came to Jochebed and said, your son shall your son's name shall be Moses, signifying a leader forth. For he shall deliver the Israelites out of bondage, but he shall be taken from you. and You will not find him for the angels of the creator will deliver him into Leo Tanas's hands and she shall adopt him as her brother and son and bestow upon him the education of a prince. Yochebed feared for in those days male children of Israelites' parentage were outlawed, nor could any man be punished for slaying them. And Yochebed prayed to Jehovah, saying, Your will be done, O Jehovah, for I know your hand is upon my son. But I ask of you, O Father, that I may come to the princess and be her nurse for the child. The angel of Jehovah said, Swear before the Creator, you will not tell the child that you are his mother. Yochebed said, though I am commanded by the king, yet I will not admit that I am the mother, and it is your will, O Jehovah. And the creator's angels fashioned the basket mm, and carried the child and placed it where it was found by Leo Tanas and her maids. And Leo Tanas, seeing it was a Hebrew child, commanded one of her maids to go and bring an Israelite just woman to nurse it. And the maid went out beyond the Utah gate and found and brought Yochebed, the child's mother. But no one knew she was its mother. And when Yochebed had come before the princess, the latter said to her, nurse the child, for I will be its mother and its sister. For the gods have delivered it into my hands. And Yochebed said, it is a goodly child. I will nurse it for you. Moses grew and became a large man, being a pure Ahuan, copper colored and of a great strength. And Pharaoh, having no son, bestowed his heart on Moses and raised him as a prince. 
having provided him with men of great learning to teach him. Moses was master of many languages and also made acquainted with kings and queens and governors for Andrew. And he espoused the cause of the king whose dominions held seven kingdoms beyond Egypt as tributary kingdoms, which paid taxes to Pharaoh. See, Moses got the same description as Abraham in Owaspi. You keep hearing people running their mouth, white man's book and racism and why are these brothers being described as copper colored brothers with black hair and black birds? Look at this. Difference number three. Difference number three. Different. No, no, no. Difference number three. The physical description of Moses is clear cut in Owasp. It is the same description as Abraham, large and copper colored. Also, in the biblical narrative, Moses' mother puts him in an ark and them into the river to save him and then into the river to save him. In Owaspi, it was the angels of the creator that put him into the ark and then into the river. Exodus 2, 11 through 15. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their birds. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew, he killed the Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men, the Hebrews, strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, what made thee a prince? Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intend thou to kill me as you killed the Egyptian. And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by the well. Ark of Bond, chapter 15, oh, I speak body blow. Verse 31. So Moses and his brother Aaron traveled about in the land of Egypt, calling together Rabban families, explaining to them and urging the people to get ready for the departure out of Egypt. For three years they labored thus, and it became known far and near that the project was on foot. And the oracles of the Egyptians prophesied that when the Israelites were once out of the country, they would unite with the kingdoms where Moses had been ambassador and then return and overpower the Egyptians. And in order to stigmatize Moses, trip off this, and in order to stigmatize Moses, they said, the Egyptians said he fled away from Pharaoh's palace because he had seen two men, an Egyptian and an Israelite fighting, and that Moses slew the Egyptian, killed him and buried him in the sand. And the recorders thus entered the report into the recorder's house. Moses was of tender heart, and he inquired of the great spirit, saying, will the voice of justice ever speak on my behalf? Jehovah through his angel answered Moses, saying, suffer your enemies, allow your enemies to put on record what they will. For the time will come when the truth shall be revealed to men. Pursue your course, for it shall be shown that you, that you do still visit the king yet. As you fled as the record state, you would not have returned with the report hanging over your head. Like Moses, if Moses really was an outlaw from Egypt running and had a body on him, he never would have came back. He never would have came back. Difference number four, while they both talk about our great brother Moses, Owaspi states that Moses never killed anyone. Moses never killed anyone. The whole tale that he laid someone down and hid his body in the sand is a lie invented by the Egyptians to stain Moses' character. Damn, son. Moses in the Passover land. Exodus 12. Shout out to the Israelite nation. You know what I mean? Right now, brothers and, brothers and sisters celebrating Pesach. Salute. You feel me? Hopefully we can get some understanding. You feel me? And continue to move forward and uh, grow and unite in love. You feel me? Look at this, Exodus 12, 1, Exodus 12, 1, then 3 through 13. Check this up. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. 
and they shall take of the blood, lamb's blood, and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it, eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head, with his legs, and with his guts, his pertinence thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, the staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Notice biblical Yahweh is commanding. Biblical Yahweh is commanding the slaughter of the Passover lambs. And the blood of those lambs is a token for redemption. Oh, I speak, Archibald, chapter 16, headshot. And Moses appointed, and Moses appointed the 10th day of the month, a bee, when all the people should start. Moreover, he said to the heads, you shall see to it that the night before they start at the hour of sunset, in the very moment the sun sets, every family shall offer a lamb in sacrifice. And every man and every woman and every child that can speak shall covenant to Jehovah in the blood of the lamb. Look at this. When the time of the slaughter is at hand, the family shall stand around and the lamb shall be in their midst, bound head and foot. And when the knife is raised for the blow, no one shall speak. For that which is to be shall be the covenant of the blood of the lamb against Egypt. And when the throat is cut across, and the blood flowing, they shall all say, in Egypt, the lamb of Jehovah is dead. His God shall go from here with Israel, but Egypt shall be a curse from this night. Except this, my covenant with you, O creator, for innocent blood has been shed as a testimony before you that with tomorrow's rising sun, I rise and never again lie down in Egypt. Moses just performed a blood ritual to bind a curse on Pharaoh and Egypt by performing the Passover sacrifice of spilling lamb blood. Notice we didn't, we didn't read no word that the creator commanded that. Moses just did a blood ritual to bring a curse on Pharaoh and the land of Egypt. Look at that, the wasp is clearing it up, look at this. Uh, 16 and 14, thus went Aaron and Akkad bearing this message in secret to the heads of the houses of Israel saying to them, thus says Moses, this is the commandment of Jehovah who was almighty. Aaron and the God said that Moses told them the almighty commanded it, really? And now on the eve of the success to the Israelites, the king of Egypt being at the point of death, sent for Moses and Moses went to him. The king said, if it should be the Lord's will to take me off before your people are gone, you will have a great brother. For my successor, Nugon, has a great hate toward Israel. Moses said, what then shall be done? The king said, behold, the pestilence has overspread Najuat and Arabina. Your people will be cut off from traveling that way. Nugon and his courtiers dwell in Harboath. Moses replied, my people shall march through Najat and Arabina. Neither shall the pestilence come upon them, for the hand of the Almighty is in this matter. Leo Tanas learned that Moses was with the king and went in to see him. She said, oh, my son and brother, you are welcome. Behold, the trials of the royal court and the persistence of the nobles or the death of the king. To this the king said, and I still live, Leo, Leo Tanas. But alas, these were his last words. For he laughed and the blood burst through his heart and he died then and there in Moses' arms. According to a waspy, the creator never commanded the slaughtering of the Passover lamb. Moses took it upon himself to do a blood ritual to exact a curse on Egypt and his new king or Pharaoh, new God. 
or Kabbalah chapter 17, oh, I speak headshot. Pharaoh said, were these things to be, God would have come to more noble quarters. You are beside yourself and I banish you, nor will I again look upon your face. Moses said, whether in this world, whether in this world or the next, you shall yet call to me to deliver you from torments. Nevertheless, I do your bidding. Neither will I come to you again, nor should you look upon my face for a long season. With that, Moses and Aaron saluted the king and departed. Moses told Pharaoh, new God, you're going to call on me to deliver you out of torments in this world or the next. The system and order of the creator is whatever you spill, you must clean up. Remember, remember, Moses put a blood curse on Pharaoh. Did this curse follow him once he died? Was Moses still responsible for the spirit of the man he cursed? Even after his death, classes in session, take notes. Take notes, OSB, Book of Esker, chapter 16, headshot. Moses in heaven pays the judgment of the creator. Oh, we. Oh, we. Haman Anastas, one of the chief marshals of God and for the heavenly city of paradise, came before the throne, duly saluting and saying, Oh, God, son of the creator. Sure about that, y'all. God is a son of the creator, not the creator. God is your brother. Oh God, son of the creator, I will speak before you. God said, speak, my son. Haman asked and said, there stands outside the city of paradise, beyond the pillars of fire, and in company with your high-raised captains, one new God, uh-oh, delivered from one of the hills of Hassa over Egypt. And he cries out continually, oh God, son of Jehovah, deliver me, deliver me, oh Moses, Moses, Moses. He is distracted continually using the same words over and over without ceasing. Now behold, the nurses and physicians haven't tried all the remedies they can invent, but fail utterly to break the spell upon him. For 70 days they have labored, and as a last resort, they have brought him here in order to learn from you. God said, new God, is this not one of the pharaohs who took up arms against the faithless of Egypt or the Israelites of Egypt? Return Haman Astis to the keepers of this man and have him blindfolded so that he may endure the light of the throne. Then you and his keepers shall bring him before me. Haman Astis saluted and departed and after a certain time returned with the keepers and new God, who was crying out unceasingly, even as had been said. And now when he was quiet before the throne of God, God said to him, behold me, I am God, son of the creator. What may I do for you? But the man did not hear what God said, but kept crying out as before. So God said to the keepers, remove the blinds a little so that the light may come upon him. And they removed the blinds a little, but lo and behold, the light made him more distracted than before. And when God saw his deplorable suffering, he inquired of his keepers as to how long the man had been in hell. And they said 76 years and in a not three years. So he was in torment 79, almost 80 years. Look at this. God said, I know that this is Pharaoh who persecuted the Jews. Take him again outside the walls and retain him there. I will send one of my swift messengers to Leka in Etheria, who knows the abiding place of Moses. Perhaps Moses put a curse upon him. If so, only Moses can deliver him. Look at that. Look at that. That curse followed Pharaoh into the that, that blood of that lamb, that lamb that was spilled, that blood that was spilled, that curse that was that was done, that blood ritual that was done. You feel me? That followed Pharaoh even after death. And the keepers took the spirit and the keepers took the spirit. New God outside the city is commanded by God. And God sent the swift messengers, Herapanitis, sister of Raban and the arrow ship of fire to the Ethereum worlds, to Gusawanicha. Lika sojourn in place at that time, commanding her to lay the matter before the Nirvanian chief Lika. Now the report, now the report. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second, guys. Hold on one second. One second, one second. Man, y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe button right here to Scoring Black Man Podcast. 
y'all getting a presentation presented by the Scoring Black Man podcast, but represented and presented by Brother Malachi Maccabee. The title of today's show is The Similarities and the Differences Between the Holy Bible and the Waspy Bible. Go ahead and handle your business, brother. Once again, y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We 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 cooking. If y'all get some understanding, spin that vortex up in the chat, man. Spin that vortex up in the chat. And again, I challenge everybody listening. You dig? Time stamp it when I say something easy. You may hear some things you disagree with, but time stamp it when you hear something evil. Evil. All right. All right, let's go ahead and get this cracking. Look at this. Now the report, now check this out. Check this out. Now the report continues in the words of Heropinitis, that is, these are her words, namely, in not many days' time, I came before Jehovah's throne. Upon which sat Lika. Notice that God sits on the throne and still the creator's throne. The creator doesn't sit on a throne. One of his sons do, or one of his daughters sit on the throne. Not the creator. The creator is ever present, invisible, meaning everywhere at one time. Look at this. And not many days' time, I came before the creator's throne upon which sat Lika, through whose Ethereum provinces the soul of Phalanx was now traveling. And I told him the story of New God. After which Lika, son of the creator, said, Let my reporters of destinations go find Moses. And, it, and if it is true that Moses put a judgment on New God, then Moses must return to the lower heavens and deliver him. The justice of the creator reaches to all time and place. I heard that. You hear that? Death does not relieve you of your responsibility. Whatever you spill, you got to clean that up. Moses cursed Pharaoh by spilling the blood of an innocent lamb. You dig by doing this blood ritual and that curse followed him into the spirit world. Hmm? Look at this. Look at this. It says, so So he says, the justice of the creator reaches to all time and place. Heropinitis continues. So I saluted before the throne of the creator and in company with the reporters of destinations, started forth again in the Ethereum realms. And after passing through seven worlds and more than 300 Nirvanian kingdoms, we entered the plains of Sapias, where the colleges and schools of embassies belonging to the Geterspan board of Retivius are situated. And here we found Moses. Look at Moses. Moses, Moses up in up in the higher heavens in some type of college and university learning. You know what I mean? Advancing and all that. Moses raising up. Look at this. Who haven't been told that he was inquired after? No sooner looked upon us than he prophesied the cause. Moses said, "Alas me, because you have come for me. You have awakened in me that which slept all these hundreds of years." Yes, it is true. I put a curse upon Pharaoh. Y'all hear that? And this message is needed for Israel in this hour because we all chewing on lamb and goat meat and, and all that. And the blood is the blood, brother. The blood. The, the, the blood. You know what I mean? Blood thirsty. You're not realizing through that spilling of that blood, that put a curse on them. And whatever you spill, you got to clean that. Look what Moses said. Yes, it is true. I put a curse upon Pharaoh. For I said to him, you shall yet call upon me to deliver you out of torments. And I added to it afterwards saying of the blood, of the blood of the sacrifice of the lamb. This shall be the testimony of innocent blood against yourself and your people for what the Hebrews have suffered. Instead of this, I should have forgiven them. You hear what Moses said? Should have just forgave them. Mm. Instead of this, I should have forgiven them. Oh, Jehovah, Jehovah, I have sinned before you. and You have searched me out after all these years and brought the matter home to me. You are just, you are just, oh, almighty. In your name and by your wisdom and power, I will return to the lower heavens and take in charge the man and people. I have judged, I cursed. And Moses wept and he gave command to the builders to provide him at once with a suitable boat of great fleetness. And when Moses procured 30,000 volunteers to go with him 
And when all things were ready, Moses took leave of his companions and he and his host entered his fire boat. And presently our two vessels were underway as if in a race for the red star, the earth. After some days, we arrived in the heavens of the earth at the city of paradise, the abiding place of God. God said, shall we not have a day of recreation first? Moses said, no. <laughs> Moses was like, no, I'm good. Till I have delivered new God who was Pharaoh, there can be no peace. Moses, I'm here to stand on business. I'm not here to shoot the breeze. I'm here to stand on business. Permit, therefore, your marshals to go to the keepers of this man and bring him before his throne. And soon Nugan was brought in again, all muffled up to keep the light from hurting him. And he was still crying out, oh, God, son of the creator, oh, Moses, Moses, Moses. And when Moses saw this, he was nearly overcome by the pitiful scene. Moses brushed away his tears and rose up, raising his hands to Jehovah, saying, light of your light, oh, Jehovah, power of your power, oh, Jehovah, deliver him whom I accursed, put his grief and sorrows upon me who has sinned against him. A mantle of yellow light, cloud-like, descended upon Moses as he stood transfixed before Jehovah. All the place was still as death. And the blinds and muffles on Nugan fell off, and he stood silent and motionless, gazing with fixed awe upon the holy scene and upon Moses on the throne of God. He like, dang. So this is slave master looking at a representative of his former slaves after they, after they both had died, when he finally come up out of his, his uh, stupor, he see Moses sitting on the throne of God. <laughs> Boy, look at this. The spirit of Jehovah moved upon the holy place and the musicians felt the power. Huh? It was the light of one who was mighty from the ethereal worlds. Gently then the music of 10,000 voices fell upon the holy audience. First mild as it fall off. Then louder and louder as if coming near, till soon the words of the anthem proclaimed Jehovah's praise. New God did not turn his eyes from the glory of Moses and the Ethereum mantle, for he knew Moses, even as if it were only yesterday that they parted in Egypt on the earth. Slowly now Moses lowered his upstretched arms and his hands were brilliant like yellow fire. And Moses said solemnly, all praise to you, Jehovah, you are just. You almighty creator. Nugan added. Look at what Pharaoh say. Nugan added. For through him is all deliverance. Look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh got to give up. Got to give it up, huh? For through him is all deliverance. Worlds without end. And your praise I will sing forever, O creator. O most high God of Moses, my deliverer. Make me strong, O Jehovah. So I can look upon him whom I persecuted and abused. Look at this. Then Moses looked upon Pharaoh and said, these things had to be. You were the last of the pyramidal age of man. And I was the first founder of the migration of the righteous. All things are done by creator in his own way and time. Mm, Moses like, it, it, what happened with us had to go down. Look at this. As I had been bound by my curse upon you and your people to come back to deliver you and them. So by your curse against Israel, now Pharaoh receives his judgment. See, go, going to hell is not judgment. You know what I mean? You get your judgment after you get delivered out of hell. Yeah, you got to correct what you did. Look at this. To come back to deliver you and them. So by your curse against Israel, you should now return down to the earth and labor to lift up Israel. And I heard a lot of milly mouth misfits claiming that, oh, watch, we don't talk about the Israelites or Israel. As y'all see today or this evening, that's a bold face lie. And a lot of this is coming from people who ain't never even read the Owaspi or even attempted to read. Look at this. For Israel has fallen from communities and has taken to kings in the same manner as the heathen and the idolater. Her people are divided and broken up. And many of them have become worshippers of the false gods, Baal and Ashtaroth. Look at that. Many Israelites. Many Israelites worship Baal and Ashtaroth and don't even know it. Under the guise of El or Yahweh, don't even know it. Need, it's important to understand the character of the Creator. Look at this. Yes, they are forgetful of my commandment of peace and love and have taken the war hmm. and earthly aggrandizement. And you shall take with you 10,000 angels of exalted grace. This is with 
This is the judgment that Pharaoh has to go through in order for him to rise up, in order for him to not be bound to the heavens of the earth. He got to labor in spirit and raise up some mortals. Who are these mortals? And you shall take with you 10,000 angels of exalted grades and go down to the earth, to the habitation of the Israelites. We keep hearing about Israelites, don't we? We keep hearing about Israelites. Uh, to the habitation of the Israelites. And by inspiration, you and your host shall select and inspire those Israelites who are within reach of inspiration. And you should take them away from all others of their people and from the heathen and idolatrous tribes that are around them. And you and your host. Hmm? And you and your host. Remember, the host is the angelic host is Pharaoh and his army. And you and your host shall abide with these mortals hundreds of years. Look at that. Pharaoh had to clean up his mess and it took hundreds of years to do it. After death, after being in hell, and you and your host shall abide with these mortals hundreds of years, reestablishing them in peace and non-resistance in the manner of the doctrines in the Essene worlds, the spirit worlds, and you shall call them Essenes. Shout out to the Nazarenes and the Essenes. Man, come on home. Come on home. See that? Moses named you. Huh? Come on home. We over here talking about the Nazarenes and their scenes. They had the light during that last arc cycle. Tap on in with your people, man. And you shall call them a scene so that they may be distinguished from all other peoples. Hmm? Shout out to the Nazarenes and the scenes, baby. You dig? I know some of y'all still on the fence. You ain't got nothing to be scared of over here. Look at this. New guy says, your decree is most just, O Moses. And I know in truth your words are the creators. Tell me how long shall this labor be for me and my host? Moses says, some hundreds of years. Until you have raised the light sufficient for a creator. Mm. So that peace and love and the doctrine of good for evil is again reestablished from the blood of the Israelites. We keep reading about Israel. Even as by the blood of the lamb, I delivered Jehovah's people out of Egypt. So he told Moses, told Pharaoh, you know what I mean? You want to labor in spirit. Your, you and your host want to be an inspiring angelic host. And y'all want to labor for hundreds of years with the descendants of the people that you were enslaving and subjugating when you was, in, when you was on this earth. And y'all, that's what every slave master got to go through. Every slave master owe that back to the board. He owe it back to the board. Yeah, Master Crenshaw, you know what I mean? Missy Heathen, they owe that back to the board. Look what Pharaoh owed back to the board. Boy, Jaja is, is amazing in his judgment, man. Look at this. And when you have perfected the generations of the Essenes, certain Louis, Louis are a certain classification of angels. They're spiritual geneticists. They inspire your great great grandparents to get together and even inspired your parents to get together to have you so you can hear this light. You know what I mean? Look at this. And certain Louis shall be sent to you from the throne of God, and they will labor with you until an Israelite. I mean, we done read Israelite about 50 times since I started this presentation. I be hearing all misfits run their mouth. This ain't got nothing to do with Israel, Mali. Nothing to do with it. That's all we read. And they will labor with you until an Israelite capable of the father's voice is born into the mortal world. Moses said, I will give you a new name and I will clothe you in garments of my own making so that they would rather flee from you than come to you. And Moses gathered up of the yellow cloud-like mantle of light. Look at this, boy. Look at this, boy. And made a mantle for Nugan and clothed him. And he named him Elaz, signifying servant of light. And after that, Elaz was provided with 10,000 co-laborers assisted by Gephania and sent back to the earth on his mission. And God appointed 100 messengers to Pharaoh so that word could be transmitted every month to paradise. Difference number five. Difference number five. According to Awaspi, the creator never commanded Moses to sacrifice innocent lambs and perform a blood ritual to bind Pharaoh with a curse in order for the Israelites to be delivered out of Egypt. The shedding of innocent blood and cursing Pharaoh is a crime that Moses had to clean up after his death. Yes, 
the judgment of Jaja is just similarity number three, the story of Yahshua. Uh-oh. The story of Yahshua, the Nazarene slash insane. If y'all get some understanding, spin the vortex up in the chat, baby. Yes, sir. We cooking. Spin, spin that vortex if y'all get some understanding, man. Easy work. I see them vortices spinning, baby. Ooh, wee. Uh, so you so Malachi, you mean to tell me the story of Yeshua is in a waspy? Man, we done read about Abraham, Moses. Now we about to read about Yeshua. We even reading about the angelic host that was announcing the glory of the birth of the king or the glory of the birth of Yahshua. We know who the angelic host is now. It's Pharaoh and his host. Had to labor with the Essene community for hundreds of years until they was able to raise up an Israelite that could receive the voice of the creator. And they raised a light sufficient enough for the creator. They had to inspire the Orthodox Israelites to get away from war, bloodshed, animal chewing, you feel me? And these people uh, separated themselves and called themselves Essenes. If you've been here since the beginning, you understand that my way into a waspy, my road into a waspy was first through the Nazarene and the same lineage. So when I first opened up a waspy, this is the first story I go to. I want to see what's going on. I want to see what it say about Yeshua. You feel me? And oh, we. Ooh, we I see everybody in the chat spinning them vortices, baby. Let's keep cooking, man. Easy work. All right, similarity number three, the story of Yahshua the Nazarene slash the same. Matthew 2 and 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a who? A Nazarene. Matthew 2, 1 through 2. Now, when Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the jews we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him according to the bible yeshua was a nazarene or in the scene at the time of his birth there was a special star in the sky that moved the magi or the wise men to come and worship him mm. luke 2 4 through 20 and joseph also went up from galilee out of the city of nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes <laughs> and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And there, and trip off this. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. I wonder who these shepherds are. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Mm. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, now we know who the angel and his host are, y'all. Who We know who that is now. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. Look at that. Hmm? Who is this angel and that heavenly host? Let's see if you've been paying attention. Hmm? A multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. If y'all know who this angel and that host is, go ahead and throw it up in the chat. And saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. 
And when they had seen, seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Also, according to the biblical narrative, the birth of Yeshua coincided with shepherds and an angelic host. You ever wondered who those, who these angelic hosts were? Take notes. Class is in session. OSB Esquire, chapter 42, headshot, birth of Yahshu. God, Jehovah's son, was wise above all these trials, for he had the light of Jehovah's kingdoms with him. And it will be shown presently how much further ahead the plans laid out by the creator's sons are compared to those plotted by his enemies. Because Pharaoh persecuted the Israelites. We keep reading, Israelites, Malachi! Hmm? Because Pharaoh persecuted the Israelites, Moses put a curse upon Pharaoh. And after hundreds of years in the lower heavens, behold, Pharaoh was cast into hell and then into chaos. And no one but Moses could deliver him, as had been previously described. So Moses descended from the higher heavens and delivered Pharaoh. And he provided Pharaoh a new name, Elaze, and sent him back to the earth to labor with the Israelites in order to fulfill his shortness and righteous works. Elaze, therefore, became a willing volunteer and many angels with him. And these angels inspired 700 Israelites. Again, if y'all know who these angels are, go ahead and post them up in the chat. Hmm? But look who these angels are inspiring. 700 Israelites. I better not hear Nam Milly Mouth Misfit from her on out. Falsely claim that Owaspi has nothing to do with Israel or there are no Israelites in, in Owaspi. Sit down, you're lying. And these angels inspire 700 Israelites to separate themselves from all other people and to go and live by the direction of the angels of the creator. Wow. Moreover, the angels inspire these people to call themselves as saints. Shout out to the Nazarene and the saints, man. Salute. Moreover, the angels inspire these people to call themselves as saints as commanded by Moses in heaven. The, the saints didn't know that Moses is the one that commanded it, commanded you to be named an a saint. A saint means spirit man. That's his spirit. Spirit man. As opposed or in contradistinction to a carnal man. You see that? Look at this. The saints were therefore a separate people pledged to the creator to have no king or earth ruler except the rabbis those are the priests and they dwelt in communities and families of tens twenties and hundreds holding all things in common sound like the book of acts with the apostles right yeah yeah because yeah. they were out of the essene order mm, acts chapter two acts chapter four yeah 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 that's that's right and exact but see that essene order was all over the world whether whatever or whatever part of the earth you travel in, you're gonna find the Essene order. You're gonna find the Orthodox, and you're gonna find those that's about peace, love. You know what I mean? No bloodshed, no warfare. It did no matter where you go. All right, these Essenes were therefore separate people, pledged to be created to have no king or earth rule except the Rabbas. And they dwelt in communities and families of tens, twenties, and hundreds, holding all things in common. But in marriage, they were monogamic, nor would they have more than one suit of clothes each. And they lived on fruits and herbs only. Headshot, boy. Headshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all sure his disciples, his brother and them, James and Just, these brothers was lifelong Nazarites. You feel me? They wasn't chewing on that. You chew on animals today. They wasn't chewing on animals. Look at this. So they ate on fruits and veggies only, just like the Essene and Nazarene literature says. Remember I told y'all I was reading that first before I got into a wasp. I get into a wasp and it's saying the same thing. Huh? Fruits and vegetables only, nor did they eat fish or flesh of anything that had ever breathed a breath of life. And they bathed every morning at sunrise and worshiped before the altar of the Creator, doing in all things in the manner of the ancient faithists by virtue of the angelic hosts who were with them. 
they did these things. By virtue of the angelic hosts who were with them, they did these things. And the angelic host is Pharaoh Nugon and his hosts that persecuted their grandparents when they were in the earth. Huh? And they held communion with the angels of heaven every night before going to bed or going to sleep. And Lazar said, because I persecuted the faithless and raised up my hands against them and against creator, I was instrumental in part for their fall. Now I will labor with them to reestablish them in purity and love. And so he labored. And so he labored. Boy, look at this. And Elaz and his angel hosts huh, made the camps of the Essenes their dwelling places. Y'all heard this? Huh? Look at this. Watching over these few Israelites day and night for hundreds of years. Yes, without leaving them, these faithful angels guarded them from all the war and hosts of angels belonging to the armies of Baal and Ashtaroth and to the triune God Luamong and his hosts. And though their sins lived in great purity of body and soul, yet they were evilly slandered by the world's people all around them. But the creator prospered the seed of their sins and holiness and love for many generations. Then came Gafani, a chief of the Louis, according to the command of God to raise up an heir to the voice of the creator. And in four more generations, Four more generations, 120 some years, huh? And Ur was born and named Joshua, or Yahshua. And he was the child of Joseph and his wife, Marah, devout worshipers of the Creator, who stood aloof from all other people except the Essenes. See that? Look at that. So even Joseph and Mary were Essenes. The time of the birth of the child was three days after the descent of a heavenly ship from the throne of God. And many of these scenes looked up and saw the star. Hold on. Hold on. You mean to tell me that star that the wise men saw was a fire ship? Was a chariot? That star that the wise men saw and came in Matthew 2 and said, we saw a star, we come to worship him. Y'all, that, that was a chariot. That was a ship. Yeah. Yeah, we decoding over it now. So the quote unquote star of Bethlehem, everybody looking for y'all, that is a chariot. The time of the birth of the child was three days after the descent of a heavenly ship from the throne of God. And many of the Essenes looked up and saw the star and they felt the cold wind and the higher heavens fall upon the place and around the tent where the child would be born. And they said to one another, the creator remembers us. But finally, the chief angel of the Louis knew beforehand what the birth would be. And he sent out around the Essene encampments extra guardian angels. And these notified the descendant host of heaven of what was near at hand. So the messengers from heaven stayed until after the child was born, acquainting Elias of the time ahead when Moses and Elijah with their hosts would come to complete the deliverance of the spirits of the Egyptians. Hold on. When did Moses and Elijah pop up? You ever ask yourself the transfiguration? How did Moses get there? And what was he there for? Matthew 17, the mountain of transfiguration. When Moses and Elijah popped up and was hollering at Yahshua. Hmm? What was he talking about to him? What was all that about? Anytime you ask somebody that question, they can't tell you. What the hell was Moses doing appearing to Yahshua and what was they talking about? How did he get there? So the messengers from heaven stayed until after the child was born. A quaint illays of the time ahead when Moses and Elijah with their host would come to complete the deliverance of the spirits of the Egyptians whom Moses had colonized in the atmosphere. Elay said, thank creator. I shall once more look upon Moses' face. When the birth was completed, the angels of heaven re-entered their starship and hastened back to paradise, God's heavenly seat. Difference number six, the identity of the angelic host that announced the birth of Yahshua was Pharaoh and his host who were against Moses and the Israelites in Egypt. Before they could start their process of ascension after death, they had to correct the evil they did to the Israelites when they were in the flesh by serving, inspiring, and protecting the descendants of the Israelites known as Essenes or Nazarenes. Since Joseph and Mary were both Essenes, they would have been under the inspiration of this angelic host. 
Again, the universal rule of thumb is whoever you harm, you must heal. Whatever you spill, you must clean up. The justice of Jaja is just difference number seven. The so-called star of Bethlehem was a fire ship. Difference number eight, the shepherds in the field were the Essene order, were of the Essene order, the same order as Yahshua and his family. No bloodshed, no animal sandwiches, and communal living. Let's look at the doctrine of the Yeshua, the Nazarene Essene. Oh, I speak, book of Esker, chapter 44, headshot, doctrines of Yahshua and his death. God said, these were my doctrines as I talked through Yahshua. You shall keep the Ten Commandments of Moses. Uh-oh. 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 You shall keep the Ten Commandments of Moses. You shall not engage in war nor bet war. You shall, you shall eat no flesh of any animal, fish, bird, fowl, or creeping thing that the Creator created alive. Look at this. Hmm? Look at what Yahshua, that what everybody called Mashiach, look what he was teaching, right? Exactly what the Essene literature says. That's the crazy part about this. Look at this. You should dwell in families in the manner of the ancient Israelites who had all things in common. Makes sense because in the book of Acts, that's what they were commanded to live like. All right. That's the beginning of establishing the creator's kingdom on earth. You mobilizing in the communities and having all things in common. That's the beginning of it. Look at this. Uh, you shall have no king or queen, nor bow down and worship to any except your creator. Ooh, we, ooh, we, ooh, we. You shall have no king or queen, nor bow down and worship to any except your creator. You shall not call on the name of angels to worship them, nor to counsel with them on the affairs of earth. You shall love your neighbor as yourself and do to your fellow man as you would have him do to you. You should return good for evil and pity to those who sin. It has been said in eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but I say return good for evil. And if a man hits you on one cheek, turn the other to him also. The man shall have only one wife and the woman only one husband. As the children honor the father, so will the family be blessed with peace and plenty. Remember that all things are of creator and you are his servants to help one another. And as much as you do these services to one another, and as much as you do these services to one another, listen, y'all, and as much as you do these services to one another, so do you serve the creator. That's powerful. Behold, behold only the virtues and wisdom in your neighbor. His faults you shall not discover. His matters are with his creator. Y'all hear that? Look at that. Do not call on the name of any God or Lord in worship. But worship the creator only. And when you pray, let it be in this manner. Jehovah, who rules in heaven and earth, hallowed be your name and reverend among men. Sufficient for me is my daily bread. And as much as I forgive those who trespass against me, so forgive me and make me steadfast to shun temptation. For all honor and glory are yours, worlds without end. Hold on, y'all. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, we. Look at this. It says right here. It says, steadfast to shun temptation for all honor and glory are yours. Worlds without end. Amen. 21. To visit the sick and distress, the helpless and blind, and to relieve them, to provide for the widow and orphan, and to keep yourself unspotted before men. These are the way of redemption. These are the way of redemption. You should take no part in the governments of men. But observe the will of the creator, being obedient to all governments for his sake. All men, all men, all men are the children of one father who is creator. And whoever chooses him, listen to this, y'all. And whoever chooses him and keeps his commands is his chosen. Bang, drop. Look at this. To preserve the seed of his chosen, you shall only wear with the chosen. Do not contend with any man for opinion's sake nor for any earthly thing. And let your speech be for others' joy, or do not open your mouth if your words will give pain. Mm. 
Therefore, therefore, be considerate with your speech, teaching others by gentleness and love to be respectful toward all men. Preserve the sacred days of the priests and the rites and ceremonies of the Emet the Kaaba. For three years, that's the rites of faithism, y'all. For three years, Joshua traveled among the Israelites, preaching and restoring the ancient doctrines. And there were gathered in groups of tens, twenties, and fifties, more than 2,000 Israelites of the ancient order of Moses who became steadfast followers of the teachings of Joshua. But because of the persecution by the apostate Jews, they kept themselves aloof from the world, having signs and passwords by which they knew one another. First, the god Baal, and after him, Thoth inspired the kings and rulers against these faithists. So you see who was ruling or inspiring the Orthodox Israelites? It was Baal in them. It was the false deities. You feel me? It's the same gods that's inspiring Israel today. Same ones. Look at this. It says, right and they prove them by commanding them to eat flesh, even swine's flesh, which if they refuse, was sufficient testimony under the laws to convict them of being enemies against the gods. So that's how they would test the, the Nazarenes and the saints. You feel me? They would capture them and make them eat flesh. And whoever refused then they would know that they were down with the creator and not balling them. Look at this. So they were scourged and put to death when they were found. Now it came to pass that Joshua went into Jerusalem to preach. And then not many days after that, he was accused of preaching the creator. And he was arrested. And while being carried to prison, he said, you are hypocrites and blasphemers. You practice none of the commandments, but all the evils of Satan. Behold, the temple shall be split in two. And you should become vagabonds on the earth. At that, the multitude cast stones upon him and killed him. And the creator sent a cherry to fire and bore his soul to paradise. Difference number nine. Yahshua and Owaspi being, being an Essene and a son of the creator taught against warfare and the shedding of blood. But Yahshua in the Bible returns for war and bloodshed and will command the files of heaven to eat the flesh of his enemies. Good night, boy. Also, also, uh, Yahshua and Owaspi is stoned while Yahshua in the Bible is crucified, nailed to a cross. Look at this, Revelation 19, 11 through 18 and 21. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vested dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a voice in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings. Dang. That you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses. Good night. And of them that sit on them. Good night. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon a horse, which swore proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Yeah, Jebus in the Bible is returning for war, and he's going to feed the fowls of heaven with the flesh of his enemies. Not just his enemies, even the horses. Good night. Difference number 10. Yahshua and Owaspi being in the, in the scene Nazarene and son of the creator taught against the chewing on animal sandwiches. Nothing that has ever breathed the breath of life and had blood flow is to enter your mouth. Yahshua in the Bible, however, upon his resurrection, ate a piece of fish, even fed the masses sushi, sushi in the hot ass desert. Luke 24, 40 to 43. When he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broad fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. 
Difference number 11. Yeshua and Owashi teaches not to bow and worship nor call on the name of any God, Lord or angel, except only your creator. Yahshua in the Bible, however, was worshipped and bowed to. Look at this, Matthew 14 and 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, of a truth, you are the son of God. Matthew 15, 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Matthew 28, 9 and 17. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Some doubted. Similarity number four, the story of the Israelites. Deuteronomy 32, 8 through 9, KJV. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. According to the Holy Bible, the entire world and its bounds are set up according to the children of Israel. Another thing to take note of is biblical Yahweh received Israel as an inheritance. Question, if biblical Yahweh is the creator, who gave him Israel as an inheritance? Who can give the creator of all creation anything? What is an inheritance? Something that is or may be inherited. The act of inheriting property. The reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring. Look at this. The acquisition of a possession, condition, or trait from work from past generations. So if biblical Yahweh is the creator who lived before him and had authority over him, you feel me, that gave him Israel as an inheritance. No one can give the creator inheritance. <laughs> He's the creator. So who, so who gave Israel as an inheritance to biblical God? Hmm? Is biblical God the creator? Check this out. Amos 3, 1 through 2. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. According to Amos the prophet, the Israelites are the only family in the earth that is known by Yahweh, Exodus 19, 1 through 6. In the third month when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And how, and how I buried you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. According to the Torah, the Israelites are a peculiar treasure to Yahweh, superior to all people on the earth a kingdom of priests, and a set-apart nation. Malachi 1, 1 through 5, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, say of the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? It was not Esau, Jacob's brother, say of the Lord. Yet I love Jacob. This is, what, this is what the Lord is saying. Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh, or Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified the border of Israel. According to Malachi the prophet, the biblical Yahweh loves the Israelites slash Jacob and hated Esau or the Edomites, Jacob's twin biological brother. Biblical Yahweh has laid Esau's heritage waste. They are called the border of wickedness and the people whom Yahweh has indignation against forever. Ooh, we, ooh, we, ooh, we. Look at this. Esquire 44, doctrine of Joshua and his death. God said, these were my doctrines as I talked through Joshua. 
verse 21, to visit the sick and distress, the helpless and blind, and to relieve them, to provide for the widow and orphan, and keep yourself unspotted before men. These are the way of redemption. Verse 23, all men are the children of one father. Ain't no orphans dealing with Jaja, the creator. All men, all men are the children of one father who is the creator. And whoever chooses him, and whoever chooses him and keeps his commands is his chosen. Bag drop, boy. Bag drop. Difference number 12. The Holy Bible says overwhelmingly that the Israelites are the exclusive chosen people of biblical Yahweh. They are special and superior above all nations. The Israelites will one day have every nation on earth in bondage as physical slaves. According to Owaspi, all who choose the ever-present creator of all creation are the chosen. Yep, all racism, bigotry, and tribal warfare must be checked at the door. Revelation 2, 26 through 27. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Dang. Book of Esther, chapter 10. Oh, I speak headshot. Regarding the faith is of Western Africa. Huh? Arabinga and Owaspi is Africa. And all I keep hearing is you slanderous jaw misfits keep saying that this is a white man's book, it's racism, it ain't got nothing to do with your people. Oh, we've been reading about is Israel, Abraham, Moses, Yahshua. Now we're talking about Israelites and not just Israelites, where they were dwelling it. Western Africa. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that part. Look at it. Regarding the faith of Western Africa or Arabia, who for the most part called themselves Israelites. Suffice it to say that the two branches still remain, those who lived under the oral law and those who lived under the written law. The latter were called Leviticans. Uh -huh, you running around. Millie Vanilli still running around here calling him his calling himself a chief priest. The, 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 the chief Levite. Boy, you's a Levitican. Look at this. The latter was called Leviticans. That is hangers on. They ain't even know Israelite. You a hanger on and of imperfect flesh and spirit. Look at this. Look at this right here. The Leviticans were not scrupulous regarding war and the preservation of their seed. And in consequence of their sins, they brought great shame upon the faithless in general. And the Leviticans' examples were evil. And they gained in numbers faster than the Oralites. The Leviticans worshipped the great spirit under the names Lord and God. Hmm? That's crazy because Lord and God is still worshipping this earth today. And these are titles. You're not supposed to worship a Lord or a God. You know what I mean? Look at this right here. Look at this. As for the Oralites, so-called because their doctrines and teachings were secret and only spoken, being taught orally, man to man and woman to woman, they were non-resistance and they owned nothing, giving all things to the Rabbah for the public good. Their practice was love and harmony, doing righteously in all things and trusting in the creator, whom they worshiped under the name eh oh, e. All the prophets and seers were born of the Oralites. All the prophets that you read about in the Bible, they rocked with the Essenes, the Oralites. They weren't with the, that's why when you look in the Bible and you see his prophets going right at the priests. The priests are the Leviticans. All right, those that rock with Jaja are the Oralites or the Essenes. That part. And so great was the spiritual power of the Oralites that during all these hundreds of years, the six million faithists that had lived without king or governor, but existed as a multitude of communities. That's what we're going back to, y'all. That's what we're going back to. You know what I mean? You looking for King David to rise up and come back and be king over you. No. 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 Chapter 11, Eskra, headshot. Oh, I speak. The Israelites made a mortal king and by their behavior said, rather man than Jehovah. Behold, we will have the Lord with us to fight our battles. Ain't that what you hear? The Lord's? That's all you hear? The Lord's? The L-O-R sound like GMS, the 
Number one, uh, uh, dusty Nick Rose. The Lord, the Lord is gonna kill you, niggas, man. The Lord. Like, who the hell is the Lord? The L O R T. The Lord. Behold, we will have the Lord with us to fight our battles. And Ball, you know, you know Ball is the Lord. You don't even know this. And Ball, God of the idolaters or the idolaters, heard and saw and gloried in the course of events. And he hastened to the scene with millions of his angel slaves to inspire the Israelites to glory in the Lord and God, whom he assumed to be. Look at that. You show you rocking with creator. You show you ain't dealing with a false God pump faking like it's your creator. So after all, most of our people worship the Lord thy God. Or is it the God thy Lord? Is it Yahweh or Yahweh thy Elohim? Was it Elohim thy Yahweh? Which one is it? Hmm? To inspire the Israelites to glory in the Lord and God, whom he assumed to be. Look at this. And millions of the Israelites fell beneath his power. And y'all wonder why we, look, we are up under no illusions around her. It's easy to see who of the Israelites Rock with Jah Jah and who don't? This is easy now. There's always been two branches of us faith is or lights, and those that rock with the Leviticus. Which one are you? Because Yahshua ain't rock with none of that. Look at this. And millions of the Israelites fell beneath his power and became his spiritual slaves. Every false deity want to put you in bondage, boy. Get on your belly and worm. The others, still, the others still steadfast in the secret oral rites, remain true to the secret name, and praise Jehovah. Eh, oh, eh. When Astaroth saw Baal's success, then for the first time ever, after 2,000 years of friendship to Baal, she became jealous. There go the goddess right there, the false one. She became jealous and filled with vengeful wrath. Look what she said. She said, I see now how this traitorous God has planned to beat me in the regions west of Greece or Hales and Europa, Europe, by the flesh of my thighs. Look at her. By the flesh of my thighs. By the, fl <laughs> by the fl flesh of my thighs, I swear this thing shall not be. I was in a hundred million warring angels down to Babylon, Tyree, yet mine and loose to inspire their mortal kings to make war on the westward cities and strongholds of Baal. And as to impoverish Egypt, I will send sufficient mortal armies to destroy everything in that land. Yes, I will also send my legions among the Israelites. This is what the false goddess Ashtaroth or Isis, all this hissing, Isis, Empress. Huh? Look at this. I, this is what she's saying against you, Israel. I will send sufficient mortal armies to destroy everything in that land. Yes, I will also send my legions among the Israelites and inspire them that I, Asherah, am the only true Yahweh with Yahweh and true Elohim, true Lord and true God. Mm. So at times, Baal took on the names of Lord and God and Israel worship. And at times, or Yahweh and El, and Israel worship, and at times it was a woman. It was Astaroth. She took on the names of Yahweh and Eve and was worshipped. Mm -hmm. I would divide them up like a broken bundle with straw and cast them to the four winds of heaven. Uh-oh, sound familiar? We've been scattered to the four winds. You think the creator did that? <laughs> when I tell y'all we've been had, We've been had. This whole time you've been running around your car saying the most high cursed us. The most high threw us in slavery. The most high scattered us to the four winds. Uh uh, au contraire. <laughs> I love to be the bird of bad news. Uh uh. Uh uh. You can't even put that on Jaja -Ja, the creator. That's a false god that puts you in slavery. It makes sense because as soon as you got up in this deal, you was dealing with false gods. Wow. On the other hand, Baal said, because of my success, I know Asheroth will be jealous and full of anger. Therefore, I will place a standing army between her heavens and mine. And if she dares to molest me, I will send my millions against her heavens and despoil her utterly. 
so that she shall be cast in hell. According to a wasp, the goddess Ashtaroth, under the name of the Lord or Yahweh, is the false deity responsible for scattering the Israelites to the four corners of the earth. Not the creator of all creation. She scattered them because of a war she was fighting against another false deity named Baal, who the Israelites secretly worshipped or at certain times outright worshipped. If y'all get some understanding, spin a vortex up in the chat, man. We over here cooking. Let's work. Let's work. <laughs> the book of Judgment, chapter 5, oh, I speak head shot. Hear the words of your God, oh Israel. Hear the words of your God, oh Israel. Bring it back. Hear the words of your God, oh Israel. All I keep hearing is slanderous jaw misfits claiming Israel ain't in OISP. OISP don't talk about Israel. Like, OISP is a, a racist book. Y'all don't even know what y'all talking about. And to the gang, to the, to the no fly zone, y'all look like mental midgets. Hear the words of your God, O Israel. Do not shut yourself up against the wisdom of your elder brother, God of heaven and earth. Look at that. God is the brother, not the father. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Look at this. Nor magnify the ancient days above the present, nor feign and say your God is going away to come no more forever. Behold, you have gone forth as a little man to battle against a giant. With your sling, you have smitten him with your one stone, creator. You were surrounded on all sides by a multiplicity of gods. One by one, you have overcome them and cast them out. The giant of the great beasts, the false gods, lies dead and cold at your feet. The nations of the earth cry out, there is only one great spirit, the creator. And I declare to you, O Israel, the voice of the I am is not gone from the earth. Through the seed of the faith is I have held up the father's kingdom. By the voice of my beloved, found in him in all the nations of the earth. Found in him in all the nations of the earth. Your enemy exalted, saying, behold, they are a scattered people. But your God profited in your footsteps. You hear that, Israel? Wherever you've been, your God profited. And in the words of your mouth, there is only one great spirit. There is only one great spirit, the creator. And I have provided to you after the manner of your forefathers a place to inhabit, where you shall not longer pay tribute to the gods of the idolaters. The idolaters. Israel, come out of the darkness of depotism. Huh? I mean, it's just me and me and us, and I'm favoring us. It's just us. And you got to be a Bantu Negro from the Congo with, with so many uh, degrees of concentrated melanin. No. Come out of the darkness of depotism or favoritism and inherit the wilderness of this land. And it shall bloom like a new paradise before your hand. But because you have accomplished the one ever present, behold, you shall no longer be, in it, be an exclusive people. You hear that? But shall allow your sons and daughters to co-mingle with the faiths of all the races and tribes of men. Huh? Because whoever chooses, Jaja is chosen. Remember that. And you shall forsake the ways of the world and go and live in the manner of your forefathers in colonies without kings or rulers, serving none but creator. And your people shall hold all things in common. We keep hearing that too. That's one similarity between Owaspi and the Bible. Communal living. And your people shall hold all things in common, being neither rich nor poor, master nor slave. And you shall call out to the idolater, the idolater, saying, come into my house and be one with me. Yo, there is only one creator. You are my brother. And it shall come to pass for you, O Israel. The way of your people shall be open. And they shall be delivered out of the bound kingdoms of the east. You hear this? Hmm? You hear this? And they keep talking about the wasp ain't got no prophecy in it or none of that. Like, look, y'all, it's time for y'all to take several seats, classes in session, the bound kingdoms of the east. Because for 2,000 years, Israel, because for 2,000 years, you have not gone forth with sword. To possess any new country and establish yourself. You will glorify before your God. You hear this? You hear this? You glorify because you ain't went, you ain't took up arms and went and laid nothing down and took over no country. For two millennium, 
You are glorified before your God. Because of your long suffering, you should find peace through the light of my kingdoms. Look at that. Look at that. If anybody need peace, it's us. Look at that. Behold, a new cycle is upon the earth. Your people should find proof of these, my words. My angels will come into the houses of your people and they shall talk with them face to face. Do not think that this book is my only revelation in this day. Run it back. Do not think that this book is my only revelation in this day. I heard that. See, we ain't around here saying this is the all in all and, the, and, and this is it. Huh? Do not think that this book is my only revelation in this day. Within your house, O Israel, you shall prepare for the voice of your God. Hmm? For I will raise up many seers and prophets among your people. And they shall testify to my words on all sides. <laughs> Do not judge, O Israel. Do not judge, O Israel, as to who are apostates before your God. I say to you, he who forsakes the creator and worships mammon and the ways of the world is an apostate in my sight. Hmm? Come on home, man. You know what I mean? We ain't talking about nothing evil over this way. Come on home. Nothing but love and light. For even though they maintain the rites and ceremonies, even though you keep the Passover, they have forsaken the spirit and truth of my commandments. Whereas many who have forsaken the rites and ceremonies in search of higher light, hmm? you may be somebody that's like, no, nah, I'm good. I ain't doing none of that no more. Or at least for right now. Whereas many who have forsaken the rites and ceremonies in search of higher light are more to the way of the creator. See that? But though they keep the rites and ceremonies, they do not drink to drunkenness and eat to glutton, feasting on flesh from, from which they have taken, from which they have taken life. Read that again. Look at this. For though they keep the rites and ceremonies, do they not drink to drunkenness and eat to gluttony, feasting on flesh from which they have taken life? And they engage in selling wine and and dealing in stocks like the idol later, while your forefathers were scrupulous to labor and brought forth out of the earth that which that with which to feed and clothe man. And they say, God prospered me, in which they falsely, in which they falsify me and blaspheme Jehovah and his kingdoms. I say to you, they are prospered by Satan. Oof. And their prosperity is the wages of bondage in heaven. And because of their wickedness, they have led my people to disbelieve in my justice and the plans of my kingdoms, for which reason they are more apostatized in my sight than those who are good who say there is no God. Wow. Wow. That's saying the Orthodox Israelites are more of apostates than an atheist. Let that sink in. Good night. Throw open your doors. Throw open your doors, O Israel. My angels stand at the threshold. These my words, which I have told to you beforehand, shall be corroborated by hundreds of thousands of witnesses from my heaven. Seek for the resurrection of your soul, O Israel. You heard this? You heard this? Seek for the resurrection of your soul, O Israel, so the Creator may be glorified in you forever and ever. If y'all get some understanding, give me a nine up in the chat. Similarity number five, Jehovah, Lord, God, and angels. Ooh, we, ooh, we, Exodus 6 and 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. What does this same verse reveal in a different English translation? Exodus 6 and 3 in LT. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. According, according to the biblical narrative, Jehovah equal Yahweh equal El Shaddai. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but I was not known to them by my name, the Lord. Jehovah equal Yahweh equal El Shaddai equal the Lord. Nehemiah 9 and 3. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God. One fourth part of the day. And another fourth part they confess and worship the Lord, their God. So Jehovah equals Yahweh equals El Shaddai equals the Lord equals God, Elohim. 
Look at this, Exodus 31 and 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone and written with the finger of God. Deuteronomy 9 and 10, the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. According to both accounts, what the world knows is the Ten Commandments was written with God's finger. These commandments were given at Mount Sinai, Acts chapter 7 and 38, NLT. Moses was with our ancestors, the assembly of God's people in the wilderness, when the angel spoke to him at Mount Sinai. And there Moses received life-giving words to pass on to us, Acts 7 and 53. You deliberately disobey God's law, even though you received it from the hands of angels. Mm. According to Stephen the Mortal, the God that wrote the Ten Commandments with his fingers and delivered them to Moses was an angel mm. or a group of angels. Yea, meaning God is Elohim, which is plural. Jehovah equal Yahweh equal El Shaddai equal the Lord equal Elohim equal angels. We look at this Genesis 32, 24 through 30. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of his socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob, your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name. Jacob said, why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. Jacob wrestled his God and won. The same God was in the form and figure of a man. Think about it. Who else would Jacob be calling God if not his God? Yep, Jacob beat up the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah equal Yahweh equal El Shaddai equal the Lord equal God equal angels equal man. Hosea 12, 3 through 4. Even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother when he became a man. He even fought with God. Yes, he wrestled with the angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face. And God spoke to him. Hold on, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button to the Storm White Black Man podcast. We got Brother Malachi Maccabee up in here on controversial and deep biblical breakdown series where everything is controversial and deep and biblical. To make your minds think, make a good conversation. And today's show, presented by Brother Malachi Maccabee, is the similarities and the differences between the Holy Bible and the Awaki Bible. The floor is yours once again, brother. All right, so anyway, here we go. Right here. So let's try and make sense. So let's try to make sense of this God is an angel and an angel is a man. God is also the Lord. Lord is also El Shaddai, who is Yahweh and who is Jehovah, who is supposed to be the Most High God according to the Holy Bible. So in essence, Jehovah, the Most High God, is a man. Now let's clear it all the way up so there's no confusion. Difference number 13, the clear-cut distinction between the Creator, God, Lord, Angel, and man. Ooh, wee, ooh, wee. Watch this. Chapter chapter one, the book of discipline, God reveals who he is. Oh, I speak headshot. This is the word from the organic heaven. Hear the words of your God, oh man. I am your brother. I am your brother. Risen from mortality to a holy place in heaven. Profit in my wisdom and be admonished by my love. For as I am your elder brother, so shall it be with you. To rise also in time to come. And look back to mortals and call them to the exalted heavens of the almighty, to the creator. Look at that. To the creator, all adoration and glory forever. Amen. All life, motion, 
power and things seen and unseen or by and through him. Neither is there an angel in heaven, neither is there an angel in heaven so high, nor sufficiently wise to comprehend the creator in his entirety, nor to see him as you see your fellow man. For he is within all, beyond and over all, being ever present in all places, doing by virtue of his presence, quickening all the living, adorable above all things. As the sun is to the light of day, so is the greater to the understanding of all the living, upon which the contemplate is the road of everlasting life, rising in wisdom, love, and power forever. Hear your God, O oh man, and distinguish the end that the two, God and the creator, God and Jehovah are not the same one, nor is your God more than what you shall be in time to come. First mortality then death which is the first resurrection such are the spirits of the dead angels dwelling with mortals upon the earth or they abide some for a few years some for a hundred some for a thousand or more years second angel organization in heaven and their abandonment of mortals which is the second resurrection 1 and 17 as a kingdom on earth as a king and the king is nevertheless a mortal so in like manner is the heavenly place of your god a kingdom of angels and the chief over them is God and angel also. So it looked like Stephen was writing the book of Acts by calling God that gave Moses an angel. That gave Moses the Ten Commandments an angel. Look at it. Yet nevertheless, the kingdom of your God embraces all the heavens of the earth. And is also so with all physical or corporeal worlds and their atmosphere in heavens. A God and organic heavens belonging to each and all of them. Nor is this all. Nor is this all. For there is a third resurrection in which the angels rise still higher in wisdom, love, and power. And are sent by your God into ethereal. Midway. Midway between the planets and stars. The highest of all heavens. Over which there are chiefs who are also gods and goddesses of still more comprehensive attributes. Look at that. Therefore, this is what God is saying. Therefore, I am like any other spirit of the dead, a one-time man upon the earth. God just told you he's like any other spirit of the dead, a one-time mortal upon the earth, even as you are in this day, but one within the organic heavens of the earth. What does ever-present mean? Ever-present means being always present or omnipresent, present in all places and at all time. Only the creator can be that. No God, no Lord, nor Savior is ever present or omnipresent. You dig? Watch this. Now look at this. A waspy is clear cut in making a distinction between the creator and a God. Every God or goddess is simply a one-time living immortal that died and rose to the rank of a God or goddess. Yes, God is your brother, not your father or all parents. God also gives praise and adoration to the creator. That doesn't happen at all in the Holy Bible. Book of Sapphire, or oh, I speak, headshot, degree of golden chamber. Double A eight, who is the creator? Answer, the great spirit. He who is over all and within all, the potent and unseen. It is he whose ever presence quickens into life all that live. Question, where is the creator? Everywhere. Y'all hear this? Where is the creator? Everywhere. Nor is there a place without him. What is his form? Answer. No man can attain to know his form. What is it? Question. What is his extent? Answer. No man can attain to know his extent. Question. Is he a person? Answer. In as much as all the living are persons, so is he the all person of all things. And as much as his ever presence quickened into life all that live, so is his ever presence with the living, seeing, hearing, and feeling every word and act of all men, women, and children on earth and in heaven. Question, who are the angels of heaven? Answer, people who once lived on earth or other corporeal worlds. Question, what is their form? Answer, even as mortals. Read about the angels, even as mortals, but being perfect in their order. Question, 
who are familiar spirits. Answer, our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, and other relatives and friends who have not been dead long and other spirits who have not learned of or risen to the heavens above Earth's atmosphere. Many of these abide on the Earth and with mortals, some for a few years, some for a hundred, and some for a thousand or more years. Question, who are saviors? Answer, familiar spirits. Familiar spirits who have kingdoms and atmosphere, which by the ancients was called the lower heaven. Saviors are tyrants. Saviors are tyrants who make slaves of other spirits who believe in them. Their slaves are sent back to mortals as guardian angels or familiars in order to make captives of mortals after death to augment the Savior's kingdoms in atmosphere. Good night, boy. Look at this. Question. What is an idol? Answer. Anything, anything having form and figure that is worshipped. Question. Who is God? Answer. A spirit with a heavenly throne. Believed by people in darkness to be the creator of all things. For many spirits often call themselves God and taught mortals to call them that also. Question, how can a man escape the toils of false lords, gods, sages, and familiars? Answer, he shall covenant with creator every day of his life. He shall covenant with creator every day of his life. And serve him by doing good works to others with all his wisdom and strength. Nor shall he call in prayer on the name of a savior or God or any other spirit. But on the great spirit only. But on the great spirit only. If he does this and eschews contention, war, leadership, earthly gain, and earthly aggrandizement. Then Ethereum angels will come and guard him. In the name of the creator, headshot, body blow. Book of Jehovah chapter seven, oh, I speak. Jehovah said, let a sign be given to the inhabitants of the earth so that they, so that they may comprehend Dana or the, or the arc cycles and the firmament of heaven for even as I bequeath to the earth a time for creating the living and a time for angels to come and partake of the first fruits of mortality and immortality so shall man at certain times and seasons receive testimony from my host in heaven. 7 and 10. He who is chief shall be called God of this heaven and the earth, which are now bestowed to his making. And God shall have a council and a throne within his heavenly city. And the place shall be called Horeb because it is the first kingdom of God in this firmament. And remember, God is not the creator. Look at this. And God shall rule on his throne for it is his. And his council shall rule with him. In my name, they shall have dominion over angels and mortals belonging to the earth. And God, listen to this, and God shall appoint chiefs under him who shall go down and dwell on the earth with mortals. And the labor of these chiefs shall be with mortals for their resurrection. Hmm? And these chiefs shall be called lords, for they are gods of land. Yeah, the Lord is a land god. Landlord? <laughs> For they are gods of land, which is the lowest rank of my commissioned gods. <laughs> Headshot. Huh? You mean to tell me we've been running around here worshiping who we call the Lord. And the Lord is the lowest rank of Jehovah's commissioned gods. The lowest. <laughs> but notice those is down with the creator God and Lord. The whole purpose is to assist mortals, us. The resurrection. Look at this. Similarity number six. Recent prophecy. Prophecy. Right? It's prophecy in the Bible. Prophecy in Owaspi. All right? So let's get into this. Recent and modern discoveries that validate Owaspi's prophetic nature. Keep in mind, Owaspi wasn't available for public scrutiny until 1882. Huh? Y'all take notes because I hear a lot of slanderous jaw misfits still running their mouth. Talking about Waspi ain't got no prophecy in it. Time to take notes. Or a book of cosmogony and prophecy. <laughs> Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Because the currents of the vortex of the earth are in constant change, the following results happen. In the regions where they overlap one another and break to a limited extent, producing discord and motion, 
certain eddies and whirlpools result. And the corporate solution is condensed, forming little planets or meteor or meteoric stones, varying in size from a pin's head to 10 or 20 miles in diameter. When the little broken currents in the vortex lose their prey, these meteoric stones or little planets are carried by the vortexian current down to the Earth's surface. Look at this. The belt in atmosphere. Pay attention. The belt in atmosphere. In our atmosphere. Where these things happen is usually about five or six or 700 miles up from the Earth's surface. But the belt sometimes ascends a thousand miles. But at further distances upward, other belts exist and others still beyond and so on. Written in 1881, a watchman revealed that there are radiation belts in the Earth's atmosphere located between 500 to 700 miles above the Earth's surface. Is this true? And if it is, when and whom confirmed it? NASA, Van Allen Probe's revolutionized view of radiation belts. Look what it say. Look what it say right here. About 600 miles. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What did Owasp say? The belts in atmosphere where these things happen is usually about five or six or 700 miles up from the Earth's surface. Huh? Hold on. NASA, about 600 miles from the Earth's surface is the first of two donut-shaped electron swarms known as the Van Allen belts or the Van Allen radiation belts. Look at that. Y'all heard this? Y'all heard this? Now, this wasn't discovered, y'all, until the 1950s. This wasn't discovered until the 1950s. Y'all, this wasn't even discovered to the 1950s. Do y'all see this? About 600 miles from the Earth's surface is the first of two donut-shaped electron swarms known as the Van Allen belts or the radiation belts. Understanding the shape and size of the belts, which can shrink and swell in response to incoming radiation from the sun, is crucial for protecting our technology in space. The harsh radiation isn't good for satellites' health, so scientists wish to know just which orbits could be jeopardized in different situations. Since the 1950s, when scientists first began forming a picture of these rings of energetic particles, our understanding of their shape has largely remained unchanged. I see this? A smaller inner belt, a largely empty space known as the slot region, and then the outer belt, which is dominated by electrons, and which is the larger and more dynamic of the two. But a new study of the data from NASA's Van Allen Pros reveals the story may not be that simple. Y'all hear this? Written in 1881, wasn't discovered to 1950s. Right? 1958 to be exact. Here it is, discovery. Look at this. Look at this. It says, Christian Berkland, Carl Stormer, Nicholas Christofolis and Enrico Medi had investigated the possibility of trapped charged particles before the space age. The second Soviet satellite, Sputnik 2, which had detectors designed by Sergei Vernov, followed by the U.S. satellites, Explorer 1 and Explorer 3, confirmed the existence of the belt in early 1958, later named after James Van Allen from the University of Iowa. The trapped radiation was first mapped by Explorer 4, Pioneer 3, and Luna 1. Y'all heard that? 1958. Written down in 1881. Look at this. Written in 1881, a wasp revealed that the Earth has radiation belts, with the inner belt starting between five to 700 miles above the Earth's surface. This wasn't discovered or confirmed until 1958 by James Van Allen, making a wasp the primary when it comes to this topic. The fact that it was written down 77 years the fact that it was written down 77 years before it was discovered confirms Owaspi's prophetic nature. Who said it wasn't any prophecy in Owaspi? Sit your monkey ass down somewhere. Owaspi, Book of Judgment 2 and 24, headshot. Out of the darkness, man has brought forth a blank. And his entity is a spark of the creator. His entity will never cease to grow. 
Yes, from the hour of conception. From the hour of conception. It is a new star in the world. Look at what you are. Man is considered a new star, his own solar system. From the hour of conception, it is a new star in the world. And it magnifies itself forever. Y'all hear what I watch you saying? It says from the moment of conception, sparks fly. Huh? Sparks fly at the hour of conception. Has this been confirmed? Because this was written in 1881, available for public scrutiny in 1882. Has it been confirmed in modern science that at the moment the sperm meets the egg, sparks fly? And if so, when was it confirmed? When a sperm meets an egg, sparks fly. Literally, according to a study published in scientific reports, an explosion of zinc fireworks occurs when a human egg is activated by a sperm enzyme. The intensity of the spark, scientists say, indicates the egg's potential to develop into a healthy embryo source. Let's news. Hmm? Zinc fireworks reveal quality of human egg. There the picture is right there. Hmm? That's the moment that our sperm cell is reaching an egg. And look at that sucker lighting up. How is this written in Owaspi in 1881? And they just not discovering this. Image source from video when sperm meets an egg sparks really do fly. Written in written in 1881, available for public scrutiny in 1882. Owaspi revealed at the hour of conception when a sperm meets an egg sparks start flying. This wasn't discovered or confirmed, y'all, until 2016. Hmm? That's 135 years after it was written. Making Owaspi the primary on this topic also. Who said a waspy isn't prophetic? Sit your monkey ass down somewhere. The cycle of Osir, the study of physical science, astrology, astronomy, and natural philosophy. 21st arc cycle after the creation of mortals, the cycle of Osir, roughly from 10,353 BC to 7,053 BC, 12,000 and 9,000 years ago. What you're looking at right there is Gobekli Tepe. Ruins. Ruins. All right, look at this. This is the timetables of prophecy. All right, if I zoom in, you see that one and that two and that three. All these are the first arc cycle, second arc cycle, third arc cycle. All right, we go all the way down to the 21st arc cycle. All right, we go all the way down to yeah, the 21st arc cycle is right here. It lasted a total of 3,300 years. All right. It was from 10,353 BC to 7,053 BC, called the Arc of Day. All right. The Ethereum angel over that arc cycle was Osiris, not the green nigga in Egypt. He ain't come around to, this, to 2,700 BC. This is, this is 12,000 years ago. The rank he held, he was an Orion god. All right. This guy was never worshipped either. Sixth era introduced astrology and science. All right, we got a timetable of prophecy over this way, man. We ain't doing no guesswork. No guesswork. Chapter 12, Osir. Osir, through his mathematicians, now furnished the lords with maps of corporeal stars and the sun belt, zodiac, the ankh. Everybody want to run around talking about the ankh. The ankh is not to be worshipped, it's a tool that's used on a star map to avoid, uh, to avoid famine. <laughs> it's, it's actually a pointer, actually. It's a tool, right? So if you worship the ankh, it's no different than worshiping a damn shovel. It was a tool the ancients used to point at the, the heavens to avoid famine, to know when to plant, to know when to harvest. So we, we, we looking goofy around here, walking around here wearing ox around our necks and worshiping the ankh. You don't even know what that really was. Look at this. And bestow names of animals upon them, the zodiacs. You'd be like, I'm a Pisces, I'm a, you know, a Cans, all this extra. All this was inspired 12,000 years ago. And bestowed names of animals upon them. Showed the position of the moon, sun, and the earth in it. Showed what a region of cows was, the place of bulls, the place of birds, the place of horses, the place of fishes, the place of scorpions, the place of sheep, the place of lions, the place of crabs, right? The place of death, Sagittarius. The place of life, Gemini. The place of Capricorn. And marked the seasons and made 12 sections to the year, which was the width of the sun belt. 
dang. And he placed the sun in the center of the belt and made lines from there to the stars with explanations of the powers of the seasons on all the living. And he gave the times of Jehovah. All right. Now, watch he actually teaches you how to prophesy. If you know the certain cycles, you can successfully prophesy. Look what old Seer had gave. And he gave the times of the creator, the 400 years of the ancients, the half times of Dan, the base of prophecy, the variation of 33 years, the times of 11, and the seven and a half times of the vortices of the stars so that the seasons could be foretold and famines averted on the earth. You see that? When the tablets were completed and ready to deliver to the lords, Osir said, take these and bestow them on mortals, both through the oracles and by inspiration, making them sacred with the prophets, seers, priests, and their kings and queens. And you shall inspire them to build temples of observation. Remember, y'all, this is 12,000 years ago. This is 12,000 years ago to study the stars. She's been by the gal and by the travel of the, north, by the, travel of the sun, north and south. And by the sea nest, North Star, and by dark chambers, so that <clears throat> so that they can prove the fitness of how for all that can be done or taught shall be to prove man's corporeal senses adequate for a perfect corporeal life. Remember, Waspy revealed in 1881 that the first astrological observatories to study the stars were first inspired to be built between the years of 10,353 BC and 7,053 BC. Has this been confirmed? If so, when? Mm. Go back, Lee Teppy. Hold on. Go back, Lee Teppy. Pot Belly Hill Curtis is a Neolithic archaeological site in south and southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey. The settlement was inhabited from circa 95 to at least 8,000 BCE. Is that not in the same time period we're talking about? Hmm? What time period are we talking about? From 10, the 3,000 year time period between 10,353 and 7,053. When was Gobekli Tepe built? When, was, when has it been dated to? 9,500 BC. We. Oh, we. Y'all can look all that up, man. Powerful. Look at Gobekli Tepe right here. Oh, we. Built 12,000 years ago, y'all. Now, Waspy says that's exactly the time period when the first when the first inspiration went out to build astrological observatories so famines could be avoided. You know what I mean? So you could know when to plant and when to order, right? That's when you get your star maps. That's when you get your zodiacs. And this is even when you get your years divided into 12 months. Y'all, all this was inspired 12,000 years ago by a son of the creator. Here's the proof. Here's the proof. All right now, look at the animals that's on the pillars. Remember, it said that you know the zodiacs and then the names or the animal names of the zodiacs. Look at that. This crab right there. Mm -hmm. Remember, Watson revealed in 1881 that the first astrological observatory to study stars was first inspired between the years of 10,353. 7053 BC. Gobekli Tepe is dated circa 9600 BC and was abandoned circa 8000 BC. And it wasn't discovered. Listen, y'all. It wasn't discovered recently until 1994. Huh? That's 113 years after it was already written in the Wasp, making it a primary on this topic as well. Yay, when it comes to prophecy, Waspi is unmatched. Does Waspi say anything about how the Great Pyramid of Giza was built? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, we. Oh, we. What does Waspi say about that? Hmm? I go to source right here. How did Egyptians build the pyramids? Ancient ramp find deepens mystery. The discovery of a 45-year-old, 4,500-year-old ramp offers clues about Egyptians' technological knowledge. When was this written? Becky Little updated <laughs> January 29, 2020. Huh? 
It is. Researchers in Egypt discovered a 4,500-year-old ramp system used to haul alabaster stones out of a quarry. And reports have, have suggested that it could provide clues as to how Egyptians built the pyramids. Archaeologists from the French Institute for Oriental Archaeology in Cairo and the University of Liverpool discovered the ramp system's remains in an ancient alabaster quarry at Hatnub, a site in the eastern desert. The ramp system dates at least as far back as the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, who built the Great Pyramid at Giza. Now let's prove the historicity of Owaspi and show that it is light years ahead of the biblical God and his indoctrinated followers. Book of the Wars Against Jehovah 49, 16 to 19. Remember, Owaspi was written in 1881. All right, look at this. After the first part of the temple was laid, the builders of the inclined plane. What is the inclined plane, yo? It's a ramp. It's a ramp. After the first part of the temple was laid, the builders of the inclined plane began to build it also. But it was built of logs. And when it was raised a little, another layer of the temple was built. Then again, the inclined plane was built higher in another layer of the temple, built and so on. Thus, the inclined plane or the ramp which was made of wood, was built up as the temple increased in height. The width of the inclined plane was the same as the width of the temple, but the whole length of the inclined plane was 440 lengths of a man. Thotma spent 24 years building the temple. Thotma's Khufu spent 24 years building the temple, and then it was completed. But it required another half a year to take away the ramp, the inclined plane used in building it. After that, it stood free and clear, the greatest building that had ever been built on the earth or ever would be. Such then was Thotma's temple of Osiris, <laughs> the Great Pyramid. Owaspi reveals in 1881 that there was a ramp around the pyramids of Giza. Modern science didn't even know it existed until 2018. 137 years after it was already written down. Waspi has proven itself to be a primary source even when it comes to pyramid building. It is safe to say that Waspi is light years ahead of any spiritual book today. Source, history.com. All right, wrapping up, wrapping up. Similarity number seven, an inheritance for the chosen. Coming around the corner. If y'all getting the vortex, if y'all getting the understanding, spin that vortex up in the chat, family. I'm wrapping up now. I'm wrapping up now. Easy work, man. Easy work, man. Easy work. So similarity number seven, an inheritance for the chosen. The new Jerusalem is the bride of Christ. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth will pass away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And he, carried him, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve of angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, trip off this, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Y'all, there's only one shape where the length, the width, and the height of it are equal. That's a box. That's a box. Two-dimensionally, it's just a square. But three-dimensionally, because we got height, that's a box. Right? The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof. And 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. All right, so let's go ahead. You know, we visual people. The New Jerusalem, y'all. Those furlongs you just read about. The New Jerusalem is 1,500 miles long, 
1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles high. How do y'all didn't know that? Right, the New Jerusalem, this box, this golden cube is supposed to sit on this earth. Hmm? Another one. As we see, the New Jerusalem also is considered the bride of Christ. The New Jerusalem is a city inhabited with Israelite men, women, and children from every tribe. Also, this is supposed to be the all highest heaven or paradise that all the righteous would dwell in forevermore. Notice we have the dimensions. Notice we have the dimensions for the New Jerusalem. Like if, if, if this is supposed to be the all highest heaven, y'all, we have the dimensions for it. With these dimensions, we can calculate the square mileage on the kingdom of heaven. 1,500 miles times 1,500 miles, the length and the width, equals 2.25 million square miles. Yep, the New Jerusalem is a golden box. Walk in any direction long enough, walk in any direction long enough, and you run right into a wall. Is this really your inheritance? Oh, I speed, book of Jehovah, chapter two, headshot. Jehovah said, I created the earth and fashioned it and placed it in the firmament. And by my presence brought man forth a living being. I gave him a physical body so that he could learn physical things. And I made death. And I made death so that he could rise in the firmament. Resurrect, rise in the firmament and inherit my Ethereum world. See, we, we talking about growing away from the earth. The new Jerusalem is coming to the earth and it's a box. You walk in any direction long enough, you run into a wall. Mm, look at this, book of Safi, degree of golden chamber. Oh, I speak headshot. Question, where is heaven? Answer, worlds unseen by mortals fill the ethereal firmament above. These worlds are heaven. These are the spirit worlds. These are the ethereal worlds. These are the abodes of the spirits of the dead. Book of Discipline, chapter one. Oh, I speak headshot. One and 19. Body blow. Noise is all. For there is a third resurrection in which the angels rise still higher in wisdom, love, and power and are sent by your God into where? Etheria. Midway between the planets and stars. The highest of all heavens, over which there are chiefs who are also gods and goddesses or still more comprehensive attributes. Good night, boy. Look at that. Huh? Midway between the stars and the planets. Look at your inheritance, man. Just part of it. Just part of it. Difference number 14, what our inheritance is. While both the Holy Bible and Owaski speak of an inheritance for the chosen. The Bible's New Jerusalem puts you back on earth in a golden box slash cage with walls in every direction. A waspy speaks of Etheria with every waking moment different and more glorious than the last one. A continual and eternal progression slash resurrection forever, upward and outward forevermore. Last one, Book of, For book of Forgotten, Son of Jehovah, chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, headshot, oh, I speak. Onward moved the float, the fire ship, with his 10 million joyous souls. Now nearing the borders of Haru, the boundary of Fergopides' honored regions, where he was known for hundreds of thousands of years and for his work on many worlds. Here, reaching Savorkum, which is the roadway of your solar system, near the post of Dan, were a half billion Ethereans, half billion high raised angels. 500 million high-raised, highly advanced angels were quartered. Trip off this. On a voyage of exploration of more than 4 million years. So you got 500 million high-raised angels been on a voyage in the creator's ethereal firmament for 4 million years. Check this out. Rich stored with the glories of great Jehovah's universe. Their Kualu, that's the name of their ship. Their Kualu, their ship, was almost like a world. Huh? So vast. And stored with all, with all appurtenances or resources. They talked of going home. 
their pilots have been coursing the firmament since long before the earth was made. What? And knew more than a million roadways in the Ethereum worlds and were best to travel to witness the grandest contrasting scenes. Look at this. By their invitation, forgot that he halted here a while. And the hosts interchanged their love and discourse on their purposes, rejoicing in the glories of creator's everlasting kingdoms. What a nasty. We over there talking about a kingdom, one kingdoms, everlasting. And though they had lived so long, right? Been on a trip four million years. And though they had lived so long and seen so much, everyone had new and wondrous works to tell of. For so great is the inventive power of Jah Jah. For so great is the inventive power of the creator. Trip off this. That never twice alike will one find the scenes in the Ethereum worlds. But radiant, each different, all moving into everlasting changes. As if each one were to outdo the former in beauty and magnificence man that is marvelous it telling you that in your inheritance every waking moment the scene you see the next moment is better than the scene you just saw the moment you just passed through and what you just saw was jaw dropping you see that oh we oh we oh we oh we so that right there y'all is, is, is basically you know what i mean presentation that i put together similarities and differences i pray everybody got some type of understanding some type of you know i mean may your spirit resonate with all this you feel me um it is what it is man but yeah 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 we bring it on out we show plenty of similarities and differences from abraham uh to moses to yeshua to israelites to the, the gods the lords the saviors and even down the prophecy, you know what I mean? We show similarities and we show differences. And trip about this. Nam Millie Mouth Miss we better get on her tongue with somebody ain't bring no sources. You feel me? Or that I didn't show and prove exactly what I came to do. You know what I mean? All praise to the ever-present creator. Hey, and shout out to the haters, job jackers, and naysayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love y'all too. If y'all got some understanding today, spin that vortex, baby. Let's work. Man, once again, man, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on here, Brother Malachi Maccabee, uh, bringing out uh, this uh, similarities and differences within the Owaspi and the uh, Holy Bible. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And, and, and just lessons mainly for people like me and others who really don't know much about the Owaspi and trying to just understand both sides of everything. So I, I figure you'd be the best person to bring it out. Uh, since you know all the books, you know what I'm saying? You've been a, uh, a student of all the books for a while. And uh, yeah, man, for you brought your presentation. Uh, I know I see the Watchman gang out there, man. Shouts out to y'all for tuning in. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, that subscribe button. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? Who knows, man, what Brother Malachi Maccabee might have next, man. You know what I mean? But uh, shouts out to all the brothers and sisters out there tuning in, man. Any final words you want to give out there, you know what I'm saying? Anything you want to uh, put out there, Brother Malachi? Hey, bro, I just, hey, right on for having me, man. May the great spirit continue to bless you, brother, enrich you and protect you while you're out there traveling and doing your thing. You know what I mean? May his, may his host surround you. You feel me? And, um, you know, hey, bro, any, any type of questions or anything, hey, it ain't nothing to reach out to the creative gang, man. We out here, creative gang TV. Go like, subscribe, sure. And uh, I'm just one brother out of many. You know what I mean? There's plenty of brothers, plenty of sisters. You feel me? Nobody's in bondage. Uh, you feel me? And everybody is, is is charged to live off the dictates of their own conscience, which is the voice of the creator. You feel me? You know right from wrong. Don't don't nobody gotta lick their fingers and show you that it's wrong to rob that old lady or touch that child or whatever the cats is out here doing these days. You understand? And so I just pray everybody got to understand and even down to judgment. You feel me? Remember, whatever whatever you spill, you gotta clean up. All right, whoever you harm, you got to heal in this world or the next, man. You feel me? So right on for having me, brother. You know it ain't nothing but love and light. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, upload this on my channel as well and get that spinning. Uh, you know, other than that, credit gang gang in the building, CGG, FGK, false god killers. And guess what? We the no-fly zone. All right? You really want to know if something can hold up 
to righteous scrutiny, you need to skip that across the game. You feel me? Because creative gang is the new no fly zone. No BS. We, we ain't let no BS fly. If it's false, it's getting called out. You dig? So right on for having me, brother. You know what I mean? Love, Man, love the to you and yours. Once again, controversial and deep biblical breakdown series sponsored by the Scoring Black Man podcast. Today's presentation presented by brother Malachi Maccabee will honor and humility STL. The difference, the similarities and the differences between the Holy Bible and the Waspi. Shalom to y'all. Peace and abundant blessings. Shalom.